coming up between Arkansas, the Razorbacks, and Texas Tech mirror images of each other. Young and old alike come here expecting to see some big time offense. Welcome everyone to the NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. Game was supposed to start at noon, so what? We'll start three hours and 30 minutes later. And these kids have been waiting. Patience pays off. This, both of them are one and oh, and both of them have proven all season long they can out slug you. And they do that in a way that not many other teams do. They rely on underclassmen, freshmen and sophomores. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Our bracket has a game tonight in which either North Carolina or Oregon State will see their college season come to an end. Washington and Texas have already said so long to Omaha and Nebraska. Our game today, Arkansas, Texas Tech. Good afternoon. Laura Rutledge will join us shortly. Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, and I'm Carl Ravitch. Mentioned the underclassmen. We got a sophomore class that's been tremendous and a freshman class that has carried one of these teams. Start with the real young kids. Really young. And you're, talking, you're talking about two freshmen, Heston Kerstad. He has been phenomenal this season, hitting 346 on the season. You're looking at 14 home runs from the three spot. Not intimidated at all. So is Casey Martin, third baseman. 13 home runs, 346 also on the season. These guys have been the catalyst as freshmen for the uh, for, for Arkansas. For Arkansas. Uh, well, and you got two softballs on the other side that can really play. Grant Little's already a second rounder taken by the San Diego Padres in the draft. He was a draft eligible sophomore. Josh Young not eligible for the draft, but one of the best third basemen in the entire country. Each have 12 home runs. They've combined to drive in over 150. It's one of the reasons why Tech has one of the best offenses in the country. No doubt about it. Many of us have sat there and yelled at our phones or our computers. Young actually talks to his back. We'll see that shortly. The freshmen and the sophomores both contribute about 30% to their team's offense in the biggest categories. Speaking of contributing, nobody does it better for us than Laura Rutledge. Hey, Laura. What's up? Lots of time, Ravi, between this rain delay for both these teams to have a lot of shenanigans. I actually pulled both teams for what's the wrong, longest rain delay they've ever had before, and it turns out Davis Martin, who's starting as the starting pitcher for Texas Tech, had a five-hour rain delay against Eric Cole, who plays for Arkansas in the Texas High School State Championships. Martin said, we didn't win, so it didn't go very well. Eric Cole had a different story. There was some FaceTiming going on between the dugouts. Zach Reams knows Jacks Biggers because they played together in community. Community College, so they had a little fun back and forth. And as you can tell, the crowd in here is already ready for action. Lots of woo pig suey, lots of chants going on during the rain delay, lots of sandwich making. There were even some Arkansas players who went up to the concourse trying to get some lemonade, but the problem was they didn't have any money, so they needed someone to pay for the lemonade. They couldn't get it for free, guys. Nothing is for free, Laura, you know that. Nothing is for free, but baseball is on tap. We are ready. In fact, these fan bases have been ready since last night. Dave Van Horn has doubled as a meteorologist for much of this week. This is our fourth day. We've had a rain delay. This is the fifth time in the last 16 years He's got this Arkansas program here as we take a look at our Capital One batting order. And we've talked about some of those guys already. Kerstad Bonfeld was here a couple of years ago. Carson Shaddy back as well. Yeah, and Luke Bonfield had on Sunday a two-run homer. Loves the breaking pitch up. Look for a good matchup against Davis Martin today. And here's a right-hander for Texas Tech, Davis Martin, who's had an up-and-down season. He was really good early, late, just okay. Stuff's good. 88 to 93 may show you a little bit more when it's right. The fastball has very good sync. The changeup and the slider are both plus. Looking for a little bit of a reset. Last two have been all right. Before that wasn't great for about a month and a half, but the ability is absolutely there. Seven scoreless innings and a Red Raider win over Florida he had in the 2016 College World Series. So maybe some good vibes on the mound that he stands on. Throws a first pitch strike to Eric Cole, the junior. And now he is ahead 0-2. Again, this was a game supposed to be played last night. They were supposed to start it at noon Eastern time, and obviously we're three and a half hours in. We got another game coming up later. Forecast favorable the rest of the day. See if Cole's hitting 328 with 14 homers and 51 RBIs can dig out of this 0-2 hole.
over the head of the third baseman and with two strikes, Eric Cole delivers for Arkansas, leadoff man aboard. Pitch up in the zone, up and away, arm side, and Cole goes with it. Third baseman off the bag, he was aligned perfectly, just a little bit too up to make the play, Josh Young. Just barely getting that. Terrific start, though. Cole, four stolen bases on the season. A board at first for Casey Martin, the freshman. Hitting 346 this year with 13 bombs, 47 RBI. Ball is down. Just that missed. one misses low. You can hear the microphone on Barry Chambers, who calls balls and strikes today for us. With the wind blowing out, believe it or not, something we haven't seen here at TD Ameritrade this year. The outfield is very deep. This one on the ground, that's a fair ball. Young was diving and couldn't get to it. It's going to head towards the corner. Cole hits third. He's being held right there. And probably a good hold given the cutoff man went way out into left field. But second and third and nobody out for the Hogs. See Young playing off the line again. This one just bolted right by him. Good decision making right here. Keeping him at third base is Eric Cole. No outs, no need to make that first out. It's Coach Thompson. You see him holding him right there. Perfect hold. Pick up your coach early and that he did. These are two very powerful offenses. Yep. And here comes Heston Kerstad, the other freshman who's hitting 346. And a couple of RBI time, opportunities time, for him as time, time is called. I think the one thing to watch, and Eddie, we were talking about this before, and watching Davis's Martin last, Davis Martin's last start is about everything from a fastball standpoint was arm side. Everything was away from the left-handers into the right-handers. Both hip hits have gone to the left side of the field, both on pitches on that side of the plate. First game, Dylan Dusick, Ryan Shedder, they combined to stifle Florida. Kind of unorthodox. The starter, Dusick, gave you two innings. Shedder then came in for four plus. Hope to get some more out of Ball, no, it didn't. Davis Martin. No swing. And it's even up at one and one. Kerstad's natural swing is the opposite field line drive the other way. Right now, this at bat, you want him to pull the ball. Worst case scenario, drive in the run from third and move the runner from second to third. Gabe Holt is nearly on the warning track in right field. Good pitch, one and two. That's as deep as we've seen anybody playing right. No That's doubt. Ever. <laughs> That's no doubles right there. Already one hit with two strikes. Always keep an eye on a two strike approach and success rate. A little high and chases it and a big strike out there for Davis Martin as he gets cursed dead to chase. Well done right there. Braxton Fulford the catcher. You could see him looking for that fastball up in the zone. He's setting the target just above the belt. That's exactly where Davis Martin threw it. The fastball has good life. When down, it has good sink. When it's up, it's got good run away from the left-handed hitter in a spot on the mound when you have to be thinking strikeout when you get to a two-strike count. That time really executed a fastball up. Cleanup hitter is Luke Bonfield hitting 306 this year. 41 RBI. Leadoff single followed by a Casey Martin double. You got two Razorbacks on. Slow roller, and it's foul. Both foul. What'd that hit? Out of Skillman, New Jersey at 6'3", 205 pounds. Nine home runs on the season. Luke hit the first one here at the College World Series. Got away with that one. Wanted it inside. Ball stayed away. Up and away. 
Bonfield and Carson Shaddy, who will see a couple of hitters from now if they get there. Both thought perhaps they would be leaving, that they wouldn't be back here after the draft their junior years. They didn't like where they were drafted. They opted to come back with the intent of getting back to Omaha, and here they are. Wicked breaking ball, and Bonfell holds up. Stuff's pretty good early. Stuff's real good early for Davis Martin. I know he gave up a few hits, but the fastball has movement. The key is going to be down. That fastball is elevated. That's where Arkansas is going to put some good swings on. I think that's where he's going now. Gotten ahead of three of the four hitters he's faced. Strike three. Kind of a high slider that Barry Chambers called for a strike. Watch location. He wants it down and away, and instead this ball stays up and in. Barry Chambers behind the plate gives him this call. Misses location, yet it's in the zone. Bonfield not too happy with it, but too close to take. And now the sophomore Dominic Fletcher. Uh, early big part of this game you had your first two guys get on and now you're one out away from getting out of it without giving up anything. Fletcher the center fielder hitting 285 out of Cypress California. This fastball path if it's elevated plays right into the swing path of Dominic Fletcher. He's a guy that can hammer fastballs middle away. Off the end of the bat, it's shallow. Right fielder is playing real deep. Look out, a collision. They dropped the ball. Both runs come in, and to second base goes Fletcher. Holt and Farhart got to the ball at the same time, and it appeared to go in and out of the glove of one of them. And because Holt was playing so far back, you could almost see that happening. Yeah, you see where Holt is. I mean, he's a couple steps in front of that warning track. He's coming in all out. Meantime, you got far out at center field, and they just do not communicate. They can't hear each other. Both of them calling it at the same time. Not one takes, neither of them take a peek and look at the reaction right here. Not good. This is a tough one to push a reset button on the mound because you come back, give up two straight hits, and then go punch out, punch out, and off the bat, you think you get a fly ball to end the inning. Now you got to go back to work. It was in the glove of Farhat. Cody, the center fielder. And that was a pretty good collision out there between the two of them. If he's not playing that deep, Holt is pretty much under that. One of those balls, Eddie, is the center fielder. It's kind of your ball, but it's it clearly ball. was clearly was hit more towards right center field. Oh. And now behind 2-0. How about that? They give that a double. Yeah. I would have had it an error on Holt. Yeah, it's got to be an error on somebody. It has to be. You can't give that ball a double. You get two guys there that are make the play. Now that's a pitcher speaking right there. Unearned runs. Instead, they're earned. Right now they are. That could change. Spot for Carson Shaddy, who's been outstanding in the tournament. And he rips that one foul. Couple of hits against Texas. This is a kid that grew up in the shadows of Arkansas, wanted to play for the Razorbacks since he was four years old. His dad played shortstop for Arkansas back from 1980 to 82. And in his last year, his dad played with a guy named Dave Van Horn. That pitch gets away from the catcher, and now advancing to third is Fletcher. So uh, sloppy start for the Red Raiders. How about that? That's a cool look right there. It's fastball elevated. You could see got into the webbing of Braxton Fulford's glove, went straight through it. Leave me up, Scotty. Nice take. Counts two balls, two strikes, two outs, two nothing. Arkansas here with two early runs in the first. Swings and misses at one in the dirt. And there's your third out, but they get a couple. It was on a double, not considered yet an error, but clearly a ball that could have been caught. 
Cody Farhat and Gabe Hope bang into each other. And it's Arkansas with the early lead here at the College World Series. We're back as we take a look at our Capital One batting order. And uh, obviously, Tim Tadlock not too pleased with the way things just went in the field, but should be encouraged by the offense that he puts up there. Again, I mentioned they're near mirror images of each other. One's just led by a sophomore class, the other by freshmen. Their numbers across the board very similar and all good. Yeah, and then after that mishap in the outfield, Gabe Holt looks to get it started. 352 batting average, 15 game hitting streak. He's got a lot of power and a lot of on base material behind him. And they get a lefty in Casey Murphy today to deal with. Yeah, and Casey Murphy's one of those guys I think is the most consistent that Arkansas has had. Well, he and Blaine Knight, you can flip a coin, but you know exactly what you're going to get with Murphy. Over the course of the season, he's been steady, consistent, three pitches at any time. They'll go fastball slider primarily, does have a changeup. Last start wasn't great, just four and a third against South Carolina. Gave up four earned. Before that against Southern Miss in the regionals, when eight complete, gave up just two hits, did not allow a run. Near perfect game against those Gamecocks. Seven shutout innings against Florida in the SEC tournament. And if you're going to be mentioned in the same breath as a dude that's 13 and 0, Blaine Knight, that's pretty good company to keep. Gabe Holt, Brian Klein, Josh Young, freshman, sophomore, sophomore for Texas Tech. This guy absolutely destroyed Duke Stream coming here. He had 583 in a super regional. Five runs, four RBIs, hit a home run. And he was a one man wrecking crew against the Blue Devils. Freshman year in the Big 12. And he is what? what really makes this Texas Tech offense go. When Holt is on base, it causes so many problems. 29 of 30 this year in stolen bases. And he, he can fly. Follow up. 1 1. And Holt, of course, who was involved in that collision, would like to do whatever he can to try to make up for it at the plate. A little late there. He played about 40 games at second base, so it's been a bit of a challenge, the transition to right field. Yeah, it didn't look all that comfortable. I mean, it, I guess it wasn't a, a, a comfort, non-comfort deal. It was just a communication deal in right and center field. But still a new position that Holt has played for now 15 games. Mm. And it's a bigger outfield than Texas oh, yeah. Tech has at home. Murphy ahead one and two. Jammed him. And this one is going down the third baseline foul. Good chase over there from Casey Martin, but to no avail. Guys, you're talking about that defensive switch that Tadlock made to put Gabe Holt in right field and bring Brian Klein into play second base. And actually, Tadlock said he felt like that was the biggest turning point of their season, just shoring up their defense a little bit better, making their defense in the infield better. That's where they felt like they just needed a little extra help and bringing Brian Klein in there would be a better deal. Actually, Gabe Holt played shortstop in high school, but they felt like he projected more as an outfielder on the next level and wanted to give him some opportunity there. One two little blooper that's going to drop and just like Arkansas and Eric Cole who fell behind two strikes Gabe Holt delivers and he's aboard was well, a typical leadoff hitter he gets two strikes and what does he do chokes up the bat look at that a couple inches just trying to put it in play and let the speed take over this time right over the defense he's on first and this game is about to stall a bit. Yeah, you got a 29 for 30 guy on first base, steals and steal attempts. You've got a lefty on the mound. And another good hitter, Brian Klein, the second baseman at the plate. See, they're playing a little guessing game as Murphy's pitch is in there for a strike. Holt took a couple steps back and a jab step forward. Casey Murphy's thrown 92 and a third innings this year. It's been one stolen base attempt in the, against him the whole year. One. And it's, it's rare when you throw that many innings and they've only tried it once. I think he's going to see more than that today. 
Shaq Bunt down. Murphy quickly to first, throws it high. Safe. And Holt did not advance to third on the throw, but the throw sailed high, and Jared Gates had to come off the bag to get it. Could have very well prevented a run by coming off the bag to get it, as that one was destined for right field. He did. Moves up right there. Puts the ball in play, and then he makes the pitcher field it. You're Casey Martin. you got to get your pitcher out of there. Instead of him making the 360, instead that ball sails on him. But rule number one of your third baseman, you can make the play, you take over. Call that pitcher off. Now you got runners at first and second, no outs, and I'm guaranteeing you one thing. They're this not big button. man's not button. Nope. Josh Young only hitting 10 points south of 400. 99 hits. His next hit will be his 100th this season. 12 home runs. Catch by a fan, I believe, had his glove. That a boy. Catcher's mitt, too. I like it. Just fell right into it. Incoming. Boom. Do we have the eyes closed when that actually made oh, contact yeah. with the glove? It's a no-look catch. I like it. Now you got it. Now open them up. <laughs> That's why you bring it. Schmidt won't get that one. Young, the sophomore, two hits against Florida. This is a guy that has made himself a terrific hitter. His work ethic is second to none. To the point where people will tell him, just stop working. Stop. Give it a break. Give yourself a little break. They got to go pull him out of the cage. Right. If you're going to pick a problem for a coach, that's probably the one you'd pick. Especially with your best player. Behind 0 2, here's your pitch. And he spoils it. Good job. Guys, and it's no accident why his on base percentage is 492 on the season. You're looking at half the time. Up at the plate, this guy's on base. Uses the entire field really well. 390 batting average. See those, all the swings he's taken. He doesn't even worry about pulling that baseball. That's why I think you go fastball in. Right here. And you can go in and a little bit off the plate if you want. But I think it's it's set up. Set up for that fastball in. He can he can get there. It's not an issue of whether he can or can't. It just seems like the approach right now is to really try to use right field. Right field, this is a test because Holt can fly at third. There he goes. And he will, look out, spike the ball. No advancement. Jacks Biggers caught it. And then he was, I think, attempting to fake a throw to third and it slipped out of his hands. But nobody advanced. Now you get runner at first and third. Eric Cole out right and the throw goes to the right place. I think Jax Biggers, when he turned around, he was trying to fake it because you, you saw the head go over to first base just to see if he could get it. I think he was also a little bit surprised how far Holt was. Spins around and sees, I mean, Holt can motor and got the right, got the right jump right there. He was just about standing on third base already. Grant Little steps in the left fielder, the sophomore hitting 380, 90 hits on the season. 12 home runs out of Midland, Texas, a second round pick of the San Diego Padres. Little and Young, guy who we just saw, two of the four players here in Omaha with 70 RBIs. He has right. one on the outside corner. Little mini debate on the campus of Texas Tech. Who's going to have a better career? 
Little or Zaire Smith who will soon be drafted in the NBA draft. Both elite talents. To be able to see the NBA draft tomorrow night on ESPN. There's been a lot of coverage about it. Think about Zaire Smith and the season he had on the basketball court. He actually blocked more shots than Marvin Bagley. He's a 6 4 guard. He had that 360 alley oop dunk against Stephen F. Austin in the NCAA tournament. Absurd. I know what that feels like. They <laughs> <laughs> 0 1 to Little. Ball, it's out. Mm. The way Little took that pitch, just followed it, tracked it yeah. away. Tells you Murphy should, as you said, it, where he should have done last time was pound hard in. This is that time. On the plate with his back foot. Go so high, two and one. No doubt Murphy with men on works a lot more mechanically and takes more time. It's two men that can run too. Klein takes off Holt with his speed at third if they throw through he would score easily. Putting himself in a tough spot now, falling behind three and one to the cleanup hitter for Texas Tech. 45 and 18 on the season, Arkansas 45 and 19 on the season. Kyle, oh, I'd send them right here. Three like one. It. Yeah. You got a you got a pitcher that's not a swing and miss guy. You got a guy that you trust at the plate. But if it's ball four, he'll take it. Stay away from the double play. Grant little more walks and strikeouts this year. 40 walks, 35 strikeouts. Klein, eight stolen bases on the season. See if he's off. No, he's not. Three and one. He called strike two and a breaking ball that gets a piece of the plate. Now I'd be shocked if he's not going. Tip, but apparently not. Big strikeout of Grant Little, and there are two down. And to come back from a 3 1 count. Come back from a 3 1 count, go breaking ball, breaking ball. Little had seen change ups earlier in the count. But Casey Murphy right there, who is always known for the swing and miss, more known for the control early contact. That time, though, one of the best hitters in the country punched him out at a big time. And that 3 1 pitch set that up. So he went fastball in to get Josh Young on a fly ball to right that did move Holt to third but didn't score a run and then he faces Little. The two main guys that you circle in this Texas Tech lineup Murphy got a back to back. So it's up to Zach Reams to see if they can get on the scoreboard the senior having a terrific senior year went in the 27th round of the Mets hitting 346. There's some thump here now. 17, 17 home runs home for runs. Reams that, that leads Texas Tech. He was coming out of the cage, shook my hand. That's a strong man yeah. right there. Yep. So it's a good last name for a home run hitter. I like it. Kind of right, you know, cream the ball, ream. I, I, I'm. Oh, that is a lefty hack at it that goes into the seats. They've played each other one time, April 24th. Little went 0 for 4 in that game. And Reams didn't get a hit either. He was 0 for 3. And the Arkansas, Arkansas staff had 17 strikeouts in that game. The Arkansas, if you're looking for a team worried about the situation, neither one of these teams overly concerned about the opponent. Oh. And in this double elimination format, being 1 0 really allows you to, to be comfortable today. Yeah, I, I think just based on 
what each of them have done over the course of the season. They're both pretty comfortable with who they are. They did face off once. We're supposed to play twice, got rained out in the second game. Arkansas got them in that game in Fayetteville. Murphy looks over at third. That's where Gabe Holt is at first base. Brian Klein. Ball, it's out. Two and one. Fans have waited three and a half hours to play, by the way. So they are uh, got their umpire uniform on. Win today, you go to Friday, you're one win away from a College World Series final. The loser's got to win three in three days. That will tax any pitching staff. One game on the schedule tomorrow. 2 1 good pitch popped up and playable on the infield. Martin there and he makes the play. They'll strand two. Good start for an Arkansas team that's 22 and 3 when scoring in the first inning. Jackson Kowar in the mound for the Florida Gators. Swing and a miss. Kowar with a career day. This is Kyle Novak. Well hit right center field. Gone. Kyle Novak goes yard. Driven deep to left field. Grand slam for Jordan Westberg. Hit it hard. That's down the line. The big banana has delivered. There have been some terrific individual performances. Jordan Westberg, seven RBI. He is responsible for the whole banana craze that has swept that school's program and that city. Jackson Kowar's 13 strikeouts were awfully quick yesterday, and boy, did he throw a change up and fastball Ball combination that had him guessing. He was fantastic. He was lethal. I mean, it, fastball got up to 98. The change up is a, it's a way plus change up to start. Had both of them going yesterday. Jared Gates steps in. He had a good game the other day, three hits, and he may have gotten another one here. Back at the wall, forget about it. Jared Gates, sixth home run of the season, and just like that, the Razorbacks increase their lead to three. Davis Martin goes with the changeup. It's a pitch that had been hit earlier also. This pitch stays up. Give Gates a lot of credit, stays with it. Watch the hands work from the up cam. Throws the hands out there, bad head. Stays in the zone long enough to carry that baby over Holt in right field. Guys, it was about a month ago that Dave Van Horn went to Jared Gates and said, listen, here's the deal. You are our best defensive first baseman. And I know that you haven't been playing consistently, but you're going to play consistently now. You're going to play the balance of this season. Since then, the offense of Gates has picked up. It's lengthened this lineup, and the power has come back. Yeah, what about that, Eddie? He told us that story. He said, look, what do you think so far about your senior season? This one popped up and playable. Center fielder, Farhat, is there. You know, his senior season said, what do you think? He goes, well, it's not so great. No, it hasn't been, but you are, to Kyle's point, our best guy, and we need you. Don't ever look at the lineup card again. You're in it. Just go play. But what does that do for a player? It takes a lot of weight off your shoulders. Uh -huh. I'm telling you right now to know that you are going to be in there every day not have to sleep on it the next day. Am I going to play or not? Do I have to get a hit or not? To show coach that I belong. It's a sense of belonging. Jack's Biggers. Oh. Looks at ball one the junior. The good thing is you don't entitle him. You actually empower him. Oh. That one misses. Played across the river, Kyle, at uh, Iowa Western, did Gates. Reavers. It's about a 20 minute drive from here. And by the way, I'm not sure if you saw how easy the swing was and how far the ball traveled. Yeah. Uh, we saw <laughs> the first three days here, that ball would have been 50 feet from the fence, blowing back in towards second base. On the ground up the middle, fielded cleanly by Klein. Good scoop at first base. Cameron Warren helped him out. And they pick up the second out. Fundamentally solid play and pick up by Klein. And how about Warren at first?
Yeah, Laura talked just a minute ago about the move from Brian Klein. They brought him in from the outfield and put him at second base. Tim Tadlock said, I think it's really short up our defense. You can see why right here. And Cam Warren, Eddie, I know you you know your way around first base, but he gets all the way to that corner, all the way to the corner of bag. It allows him to go a little bit further and pick up a second baseman. My man hangs with a little toothpick or oh, yeah. always has it. Yeah. It's like a plastic yeah, bottle it's like cap. A it's a little odd, but that's what works for him. Oh. Well, you old timers, not UL Washington style. Like it. Is that like a straw or something? It's like one of those plastic bottle cap things that, the, you know, the ring around when you take a water bottle <laughs> like this and you right. take the bottom of that ring, that's what he does. He chews oh. it. It's different. Yeah, guys, Cameron Warren uh, takes that little ring as you were talking about, Ravi, underneath oh, the cap of the bottle cap and usually takes it off the water bottle to start the day. He'll get a new one every day, he says, but sometimes he even goes through two. If he doesn't chew on that, he may chew on a plastic knife, sometimes a straw. It's got to be plastic. He said he's a little worried about plastic poisoning. Yeah, there's a lot of things that can really go wrong there. I'm not going to encourage that, but it works for our man Cameron Warren. Fly out by Eric Cole. That one didn't get off the wall. Did he just look like he was calling timeout before that pitch came in? If it did, it was good. It wasn't granted. Home run for Jared Gates. College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? Some of the scenes from uh, the last four days we've dealt with rain throughout today we had a three and a half hour rain delay but the NCAA their meteorologists obviously knew what they were doing the skies have and clouds have broken and we got some baseball here including home runs flying over the wall for Jared Gates who just hit one six home runs oh. since the start of that SEC tournament three of them have come then so he's got six total three since the start of the SEC tourney he's warm Here's Cameron Warren, our first baseman. Hit some pop in that bat. Ten homers hitting 325 on the 1 0. Sails away 2 0. Down the middle, <laughs> two and one. Cameron Warren basically kind of gave up baseball when he was like 13 or 14. Then he went off to Lubbock High School and he fell back in love with it. And he couldn't be happier. And you get the sense that Texas Tech couldn't be much happier. Yeah, he's fit great offensively in the middle of his lineup. We've already seen him defensively, the footwork around first base. Mops out. You know what that sounds like when you give it up when you're 13 or 14? A little burnout. A little burnout. I just want to shut that it for a while. Be. One of those uh, text messages, Dad, I'm done with baseball. Yeah. I'm going to focus on other pursuits. And then he re engaged with the sport. And there's some pop here at three and one. He watches a strike two. A little hesitant to throw that bat. He probably had an idea in the back of his head. I'm not sure yet. This might be a strike. <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay. And yep. it's okay. That's not a pitch he wants to swing through. No. One. He wants that 2-0 pitch back. Win yes, 2-0 middle and fastball. That yeah, absolutely. Looked like he was taken all the way too. He's right up on the plate for this 3-2 offering from Murphy, coming in. Ball at too far. Well, guys, we just saw Casey Murphy walk Cameron Warren, and one of the things that Wes Johnson was saying in the dugout just now is you've got to go after these guys. That was the message coming in. They felt like he had nibbled around a little bit too much in his last start against South Carolina, mainly because South Carolina knew him so well and he knew them so well. He was trying to really exploit hitters' weaknesses. But today the message was go right at these hitters. They're going to be talented. You've got to give them your best stuff at, with your best location. And that was the message still when he was just in the dugout. Uh, and you got a three nothing lead. You got 88 innings pitch coming into the regular season. 74 strikeouts only 16 walks but a couple of hiccups here late. Here's a jam shot and shortstop catch it. You could have dropped that and had a double play. Yeah, That's one of those uh, things you, you, got, you, you sort of have to catch this one because of the angle and where he was. But as a hitter you have to continue to run. 
can't just assume that he's not he's going to make the play. Michael Davis never really moved. Took two steps out of the box and that was it. To Laura's point just a minute ago he did challenge him right there first pitch fastball in on his hands yep. and absolutely got in on his hands. And now Cody Farhat the center fielder the junior. Five home runs. Ball. That's a mindset isn't it Kyle the challenge thing when you don't throw 96 like we saw Coar. Even at the major league level, you see some guys who just seem unwilling to just challenge you. You got a three nothing lead. You're saying throw strikes. Let, let's see what happens. I agree. I, I think one of the misleading things about challenging people is thinking that ball is hammered to left field off the bat of Farhat. Back at the wall, leaping and making the catch against the wall is Kerstad. They will not double off Warren, but what a play by Heston Kerstad as he slams into the wall. That's a great play, fellas. The fans appreciate it. Heston Kerstad has really improved out there in left field. Watch him right here. Takes a peek to see where the wall is and braces for impact, but keeps the focus. Mouth open. Love that. As an outfielder, you're running mouth open. Why? Because it gives you the appearance that that ball is not bouncing up and down in the air. Start running on your heels, you get in a lot of trouble. That outfielder, nice play right there by Hurston Kerstad. There have been times this year where Kerstad has not looked all that comfortable out in left field. That was very well done. And that is a really good sign if you're Arkansas because if he's defending, you know the bat's going to play. The bat's always going to play. The arm is plenty there. But that that was, that's one that changes the course of the ball game right there. I don't know if we're looking at this to see if it hit the wall first before it went into his glove. But if that's the case, this, this should be pretty quick. I wouldn't be surprised if they're trying to see or if you touch runner second, touch second which I saw him touch. It's a great play. Yep. Well, if they're discussing that, as Kyle said, yeah, and they were because the third base umpire, Jeff Hendricks, came out, raised his hand. So the catch is certainly a catch. And as you look at the field now, it is bathed in sunshine here in Omaha, Nebraska. Whoever thought we would have seen that given the rain we dealt with for three and a half hours, but a good sign. Had a good game early on with the ball flying at TD Ameritrade today. One went over the wall, one went to the wall. And we got two outs now for Braxton Fulford, the number nine hitter, the catcher and a freshman for the Red Raiders. Ball. There goes. Throw down to second is way short. Oh, did he get him? Oh, he got him on the arm on the way by. The throw took the glove of Biggers right into the arm of Cameron Warren for the out. That was bizarre. He didn't even tag him. It literally took him into it. Watch Shaddy right here. Gets the ball. Look at the hand. Gets wow. there before the bat. I'm telling you, what a great call by Travis Katzmeyer. Umpire at second base. Heston Kerstad with an outstanding catch, banging up against that wall out there. You can see the ball move a little bit, but stuck in the web. And how about this play by Shaddy at second? Fortunate, the ball on one hop took him right into the arm of Warren, didn't even move it. And as Eduardo pointed out, the MVP on that play may have been the umpire, Travis Katzenmeyer, for calling it accurately. Warren tried to get himself into scoring position. A lot of action here early as we head to the top of the third. With the Razorbacks up three zip. Two, three, four, do up Martin, Kerstad, and Luke Bonfield. Martin doubled his first time up. The freshman potentially moves back to the middle of the infield next year, depending on whether or not Jack's bigger signs. But this is going to be somebody in two years when he is draft eligible as a junior. I'd be shocked if he's not a top half of the first round guy. The feet really work. There's real power there as a freshman. He's made the transition. Top level Division One baseball without really missing a beat. He's out. He's out. He's out. Chased a wicked slider. His breaking ball has been outstanding. Yes. No, I mentioned the fact that uh, we got the NBA draft coming up tomorrow night, and that is the 72nd variety of the draft. 7 Eastern time from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn with the Suns. Number one, Kings two, Hawks three. Who's going to be going number one? Ayton, 
Luka Doncic, Marvin back to the third. Find out Thursday, 7 Eastern ESPN. Kyrie Thomas expected to be a late first round pick out of Creighton. They had Kevin Knox on get up this morning, the Kentucky forward. John Calipari is going to be on get up tomorrow. Good show today. They were parading guests through. Got a chance to hear the perspective of the player. Tomorrow, the coach, Coach Cal, knows a few things about NBA oh. players coming out of college and he's what they project to. He's, he's had a few. Shea Gilgis Alexander, their great point guard. Where does he go compared to a guy like Trey Young? That's all draft conversation for tomorrow. Let's not forget last time he struck him out on a fastball up made him chase with two strikes one two count a game of adjustments. Three hits in the opener for Kerstad and he rolls one foul down oh, the foul. first baseline. Three hits in the opener and all SEC second team or a freshman all American. So you've got a pretty good building block team coming back next year to note you. I think they'll be okay. Yeah, you start with Casey Martin and Heston right. Kerstad right in the middle of this lineup. Dominic Fletcher comes back. He's one of the best defensive center fielders in the entire country. Talked to another coach over the last few days about Kerstad. He said he's, he's as impressive a freshman hitter as I saw the entire season. It's complete. There's not one consistent hole that you can try to go to all the time. Yep, he's out, he's out, he's out. Uh, we got ourselves a real day. No doubt about it. Picks up strike out number five. There's times when Davis Martin is out there that he'll go to the changeup a little bit more against the left handers. But I think that the key when you're on the mound is to figure out what you've got going that day. He's got this one going today. The break of ball is real back to back strikeouts gets Martin swinging on it before and Kerstad there for the second out. And the two best hitters in the lineup Martin and Kerstad now Luke Bonfield the designated hitter he struck out in the first. Ball down. Fastball misses down 92 miles an hour. Luke Bonfield coming off a 7 for 24 NCAA tournament before he got here. Oh, foul. That's foul. Bonfield was a Mets 21st round pick back in 2014. He then went off to the IMG Academy in Florida as a senior. Last three years, he's been right there with eight homers, nine homers, eight homers. Feels like Davis Martin is trying to figure out what the other pitch is going to be today. He knows he's got that slider, that wicked breaking ball. What's the other one? I, I thought his fastball had really good movement the first, and he, he gave up a few hits, but it doesn't mean that you necessarily go away from it. That's the fastball there at 93. He's been up 94, has good movement. Changeup seems like his third best today, but I know that's one he's not going to go away from. Yeah, but I think he can live today just with that fastball curveball. Agreed. That changeup has stayed up. A couple hits have been. Have fallen since and good swings have been taken from it. Yeah, I mean the changeup is a ball that gates it out. Ball's well, taken off. It's the second time that's happened. And that was 95. That was up a little bit as far as velocity goes. Wants to throw for a strike. This is the time right here. Struck him out looking. Play. On a breaking pitch last time. There it was again. That is tight. Strikes out Martin, Kerstad, and Bonfield. Two, three, four. He's got six Ks as we are two and a half into this one. Pretty impressive work here, Kyle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Six strikeouts in the first three innings, all on the breaking ball in this inning, but Tech still trails with three nothing. Here in Omaha, you will only see Arkansas wear two uniforms. They got the grays that they're wearing today and then the cream uniform they wear as their other option. That's because earlier this year they were playing Georgia and they had their laundry done there and unfortunately somebody mixed the whites and the reds and they all turned pink. So that's what they got. And they they couldn't wear those pink ones, guys. So they had to go <laughs> they had to go with the the grays or the creams. And and I don't know. I mean, we submitted our laundry today here at ESPN and I'm just hoping no one mixes our whites and reds. Well, you had that <laughs> rainbow thing on last night. Was that submitted? Because that could affect some other people's clothing. No, I didn't need to watch that because it's not coming back. 
<laughs> a, a one and dunner. Speaking of the NBA draft, one and done. All right, Braxton Fulford bats at the bottom of the third. He's your nine hole hitter for Texas Tech. 0 oh and 2. That's it. Like that. You hear Barry Chambers right there? That's it. That's as far as we're going to go away with the fastball. Fulford didn't even have to ask. Second strike out of the game for Casey Murphy. Remember, Fulford was at the plate when Cameron Warren got caught stealing. And now back to the top of the order. Good start for Gabe Holt and Brian Klein. They both reached base. Holt got stranded at third after a little bloop single over the shortstop's head. Two really good leadoff hitters in this game. Holt and Cole. Oh. Tell you what, first baseman Gates playing back. Here on Gabe Holt, and he can really scoot a drag bunt to, yeah. to, towards second base. I don't see anyone catching him. No, and you, and you got Casey Murphy, the left-hander, who's going to fall off of the third base side anyway. So if he gets a bunt down to that right side, and it's hard at all, it's a base hit. Yep. They're two dynamic leadoff guys, and they do it a little bit different. Holt with more speed, 29 stolen bases. I heard Berkey. They were talking the other day. He's like, if you're 29 for 30, you ought to be. 50 for 55 like at some point are you running enough and taking enough chances because it is it is elite speed Cole with a little bit more power for Arkansas out of Bon Air Georgia what a 2018 freshman season he had Ooh, fooled on that one one and two yeah, that swing didn't look good but remember this was the same situation he was up last time had two strikes now he makes the adjustment Chokes up on the bat again a couple inches. This was an easy one too for Tim Tadlock. Gabe Holt has let off every game this season. Time, time here. Get the first four in this Texas Tech lineup with more walks than strikeouts. Unbelievable. Unheard of. All with on base percentages way above 400. Tim Tadlock has a lot of options in this lineup. All of a sudden, Casey Murphy's become strikeout guy. That's two in a row, three in the game. The, boys are the College World Series Finals begin Monday at 7 on ESPN. Best two out of three. We will see if we have a champion crowned by this time next week, or we will be playing an all-important game three on Wednesday. Games one and two, Monday and Tuesday, 7 Eastern time. And then the Cubs and Dodgers will play on ESPN Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. A little double dip of college baseball, Major League Baseball. Two down in the third for Brian Klein. Try to sacrifice, reached on an error by Murphy, who sailed one over the head of Gates, came off the bag to make the play. Oh. There you go. Looks like those went through the washing machine too. Get that same pink hue. <laughs> hey, you're in this ballpark and you've seen for four days like balls that are just hammered. They don't go out of the park. When the wind finally turns, does it change? Give you a little lift as a hitter and do you maybe change your approach? You shouldn't try to change your approach. Right. I mean, this is the approach that's gotten you to this point during the entire season. The approach changes defensively and with when it comes to positioning. Ball, it's in. Yeah, you can tell Murphy liked where that pitch was. So did Cook, his catcher. It was kind of a balk from Cook to throw that ball back because I think he was waiting to hear something different to know that's in. And it was in. Yep. Who 
three and two. Murphy trying to match Martin with three strikeouts in the third. Strike three, the M&M boys, Casey Murphy and Davis Martin. Well, you say good morning, good afternoon, good night. I say buenos dias, buenas tardes, y buenas noches. Yeah. And a shot into the corner, a two-run double to put the Huskies on top. We have a lightning delay. Ponchos do not come with instructions. For some, that can be a challenge. You have Ben McDonald the autograph? Hey! Three run shot, and Oregon State is rolling. An offensive onslaught, Oregon State advances. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Paul off mask. Great boy reaction, too. And then blame it on Ben. <laughs> Tom Hart, Ben McDonald, Chris Burke. And Runes have had a terrific time here at the College World Series. That punt is laid down. It's going to go foul. The antics of a booth after a 17-day <laughs> rain delay. That's what. That's some of the things that go on. You get that mask. Would you see if we can just play Plinko off of that mask? <laughs> there, there was a legitimate moment of concern for Hart. I mean, he, he took the helmet off and kind of sat down like you get caught talking right. when you're second with the head head. Head. Yeah, just kind of pointing. It. No, it was that guy right over there. One me. He went for the head oh, scratch too. too. Like, oh boy, I, this isn't going to be good. We're not sure where where it landed down there, but there are people down there. That looked like the golf swing we were trying to hit a little further than the last swing, but Martin just humped that thing at 93 and lost control. He spins one in there for a better one of the strike. Dominic Fletcher, Carson Shaddy, and Jared Gates here in the fourth inning. Ten strikeouts through three for both pitchers. Six and four. Martin with a six. Shakes off one, likes this one. It's a spinner. Look out. Ooh. Got in there in a hurry. We're all good. Thank you. And now we're on TV. <laughs> Five, a little two seamer away that he spoiled. Good job by Fletcher, the center fielder. He could spoil some fastballs. For Fletcher, I mean, it's kind of a pulls the length of the plate swing, but when he gets to it, it is it is real power. Hit 12 homers last year. Oh, that was foul. one shy of the Arkansas freshman record. Throws his fastball around 92, 93, change up 87. It's a little hard. Yeah, it is. From a velo standpoint, it's, uh, there, there's not enough separation between the two. What was the Coar separation yesterday on, on just an incredible display of power and change? I didn't what see it. it. His is usually 10 to 12 and has was. really good sync. I, I don't remember what the velo was, but when he's going right, it's usually right in there. And that's what you want. I mean, ideally 10 or more. Arm speed stays the same. The only thing that changes is the grip. And he has Point. one of the best, if not the best, in all of college baseball. One, two, Got fastball him. deep to right field and forget about it. Dominic Fletcher blasts his ninth of the year. Arkansas has gone yard twice and now lead it 4 nothing. And he knew it right away. Well, we've been featuring his brother in the Angels game the last two nights. And I know Big Brother's watching right now saying, do I have that kind of pop? Watch this pitch. Up in the zone. Catches it out front again. He knew it as soon as he hit it. Oh, yeah. He can ambush a fastball now. 
I mean, you go middle away, and that's right into that swing path. That's exactly where he wants to hit it. Fletcher, who had yanked a few foul right there, got one he could handle, and that's two home runs on the day for the Hogs. Yeah, how about the at bat, though? I mean, how many right. balls did he spoil? Yeah, that were good pitches. Five straight foul balls, and then the ninth pitch of the at bat, he takes deep for a home run. We saw in the second and the third inning a lot of breaking pitches, hit. a lot of curveballs for Martin. That at bat, I was surprised he did not go to it. Featured the change up. There were breaking pitch that was up, but he has one that goes to the back foot oh. against left handed hitters. That's that's a swing and miss. And that's the one you could get with that flat swing path. If, if you have depth on the breaking ball towards his back foot, that's where you're going to get a lot of swing and miss for Fletcher. If you elevate a fastball, it goes right into that path. Ball. Three and one. Martin working quickly and right now ineffectively. And this Arkansas team is feeling really good about themselves. They felt good about themselves for about five months. Yeah, they and should. It's, it's a really good team. Because you, you can't circle one guy. You can't circle two guys. Oh, and this out. offensive depth is showing you why. Home runs from the five hole and the seven hole. First two guys of the ball game had base hits and came around to score. You got a guy that's 13 and 0. And here comes the first. Jared Gates hit one. That one was off the changeup. Flicked his wrist, strong forearms. Gates back up at the plate. Runner at first base. He'll have the clear right now as visit to the mound. The serenaded by the Arkansas fans. Matt Gardner comes out. And just like that, he comes out. We start to get some action in the Red Raiders bullpen. Jose Cazada yeah. throw now. It's great stuff. Cazada can get it up 95, 96. As they meet on the mound, I want to remind everybody if you're looking for more coverage of the College World Series and the interactive brackets, we invite you to go to NCAA.com. We've seen the last couple of years here at TD Ameritrade, especially with the favorable weather conditions. This is a good ballpark to actually hit home runs in. When that wind blows out, you elevate it, it'll go. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, when we get situations like this or weather patterns like this, I think it plays really fair. Yep. It, it goes at all parks. We've seen the ball fly a little bit more to center field. Eleven and a half runs per game, the most since the move to TD Emerge Raid back in 2011. 2015 there were eight and a half runs per game. It really is so contingent on which way the wind is blowing. And here's Arkansas up four zip. They got a couple of blasts. This guy hit one of them. They beat Texas 11 five on Sunday. Texas eliminated yesterday. Oh. Lineup that features five guys batting over 300. Chatty only has four stolen bases on the season, and perhaps Davis Martin buying a little time for Kazada out there in the bullpen. Sixty six pitches already. Oh, just high, and he is in danger now of walking back to back hitters three and oh. Tell you what, the way Jared Gates has been swinging the bat, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the green light right here. Cook on deck. Up by four. Hit. 
Gates has lived through it. This was a team that a couple of years ago lost 13 games in a row. But the turnaround since Dave Van Horn took over has yeah. been remarkable. Well, you know, going into the season, we didn't know what you'd see from Martin. You didn't know what you'd see from Kerstad, but you did have a lot coming back. I think the only question for Dave Van Horn is pitching depth. Oof. 3 1. You can see him frustrated. That was a pitch right down the middle. Seventh time that Dave Van Horn has been here, took Nebraska to the first two College World Series that that program had ever been to. The last five at Arkansas. Sixteen wins in the NCAA tournament the last five years. They've won six of seven this year. They've outscored their opponents by almost 40 runs, and they're adding to it today. Here's your 3 2. Runner goes spoiled on a foul ball into the seats. Little shower. We got an umbrella, and then we're going to just throw that little blue. Rally towel over our head and I can see a poncho about to be opened. I think we're okay. I think we're all right. <laughs> Cantore, what do you got? We okay? We're okay. All right. Okay. Is that my new nickname now? Oh yeah. <laughs> we, we in weather related situations. I mean there may be a few different nicknames that we bring in, but anything involving weather, I think that's fair. That's all right, right? I like Jim. It's a compliment. You're good at it. I like Jim. He's the best. He's the best. But if he shows up, you I want to go somewhere else. Runner goes first base. Only one play, so he takes himself out of the double play. Good job as Gates grounds out to Ward at first for the first out of the inning. What can you tell us about your weather here, Kyle? I don't. I, don't, I mean, I've been doing this for 10, 12 years. I don't recall this. Rain? Well, the sort of steady rain. Usually, you kind of get those storms that kind of come in, blow it up, and then they leave. Yeah. This has been more of a we're not leaving type. Weather pattern. All right. This one's just here to cool you off a little bit. No, I was pretty good. Before? Yeah, I was feeling pretty good. Not a whole lot you can do about it, Rav. You get Buffett to maybe put a dome oh. over this place? Here you go. No. More Buffett live here in Omaha? I, I've been told he does. You're involved with baseball. I used to own the local team or be a minority owner. Throw a little roof over this bad boy. A little retractable. Pop one of those up this weekend. <laughs> one out to Grant Cook. Look out. Foul ball Ow. almost got him on the fingers. Right off a knob of the bat. I mean, that again, it, it shows you the movement that Davis Martin has on that fastball. Cook started those hands and it just kept coming all the way into him. These fans, their patience being tested a little bit. Like we've see, seen enough. We, we waited out a three and a hook. Uncle. And now we got more. <laughs> more. <laughs> Somebody turn the water off. One one. One out. One already in on a Fletcher homer. And that one isn't close to the zone like it was the first three innings. Which got him six strikeouts through three. Good news for the Texas Tech Red Raiders not to suggest this game is close to being over but when you want to know you certainly get another chance to play another game. This is not an elimination game. That's tonight between Carolina and Oregon State. No, it's nope. so far. That's three and one. Guys don't panic. Just a little cell burst right now. Not even showing up on my radar. Is yep. your radar? Yeah, that's the Eddie Cam. Eddie Cam radar. Red Oak is about to get hit, though. No oh, Red Oak. Uh oh, where we, we go? got issues. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. oh, boy. Get out the manual. Just going to create a hole for my arm. I got a feeling he'll still be there before this. Uh oh. Nope. Uh, yeah, no, we're maybe. good. We're maybe. good. Maybe. Uh, we are good. Boom. Well done. Piece of cake. Never a doubt. Whose idea was this garbage bag? That's big league. Stay covered. <laughs> what? 
Lights have gotten a workout here during the day, too. 3-2 to Cook. Maybe Martin's last batter if he loses him. Yes, Gate Mike. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why. I like it. I think it sounds cool. <laughs> the microphone embedded in the bullpen gate door provides some great natural sound. On the ground, fielded cleanly by Davis. He throws him out at first for the second out. Tell you what, I thought he was going to go to third base with that. You think he should have? He had him clear. He went on contact right there. That ball's in front of the runner. Watch this right here. It's 4 nothing. Takes a great secondary. But he could easily go to third base right there and get him. No problem whatsoever. Instead goes to first. With no outs, he'll go to third base guaranteed. That was one my out, question. Right. He's going to go to first. Right. But Young was there at third base waiting for him just in case he wanted to. Here's Biggers. So for the people at home, why, why with one out versus no outs? Well, you have a lot more chances of scoring with one out when you have a runner at third base, so you try to get that lead runner. But remember the guy that's on the mound. What pitch is the one that's been effective for him? The curveball. He spikes the curveball. It just puts a lot of pressure on that catcher behind the plate. Well, the run's coming in, so perhaps a mistake there, not trying to knock the runner off at third. Shaddy, RBI for the number nine hitter. Jacks Biggers and it's five nothing Arkansas. It's about a month ago that Jacks Biggers squared to bunt. Took one in the finger, broke that finger, and was out for a while. But Biggers now back in the lineup. And Dave Van Hornet said since he's come back, it's almost like that's made him a better hitter. Fastball in her half. You can see that finger all taped up. Biggers gets the barrel to it, shoots it to right. And the Hogs have knocked Davis Martin out of this one in the fourth. Now, I was wondering, because the ball was hit pretty hard by Grant Cook, if that was going to be the last batter. Now it was Biggers in his RBI. They've gotten a home run from Dominic Fletcher in the five hole, a home run from Jared Gates in the seven hole, and an RBI single from the nine hole hitter, Jax Biggers. Who picks Suey? Feeling good about ourselves. Fletch leaves the building, and we'll be back after this at the College World Series. Five nothing Hogs. Eddie had his nose in the computer and missed his uh, floss version during the. Musical comeback to dancing the live American television. You were dancing right there, was I? Yeah. It's good old American TV. That's what it is. Arkansas has got a comfortable five nothing lead. We are in the top of the fourth inning. The road teams have had great success here at the College World Series. We've had a lot of bottom of nine batting opportunities. As Jose Quezada comes in, he can throw it up to 95 yep. miles an hour. Padres liked him enough to take him in the 10th round. Yeah, this is going to be a good senior sign. Kazada, explosive fastball, good slider behind it. He's been one of the top guys out of this Texas Tech bullpen. Two outs, Eric Cole, runner quickly off, throw down to second. Good throw, called out. Figures try to get in a scoring position. Cole will lead off when they come back up in the fifth. Texas Tech, Red Raiders got to get something going. Josh Young is coming up when we come back. Everybody talks about this because I talk to my bat and they all want to know what I say. But I can't tell anymore because then I think it won't work anymore. It all starts on deck, really. I do some arm swings in the same order every time. I walk to the plate and I step on home plate with my right foot, spit or lick my gloves, rub them together once, clap, and then I'll pick my bat up and stare at it and take another cleansing breath and get ready, talk to my bat a little bit, and then I'll address the plate. 
right, so Josh Young will not tell us what he says to the bat. I try to read his lips. I'm not exactly sure what he's saying, but a few other guys on this Texas Tech team have tried to talk to their bat, too, and they say it just doesn't work. The bat isn't listening the way that Josh Young's bat listens to him. He was saying earlier today, he's got this bat here, and a couple of the guys were asking him, are you still rolling with this bat? Because there were a few things he didn't really love about it, and he said, yeah, boys, this bat still has hits in it, so I'm sticking with it for a little while longer. Yeah, there's a lot of things going there. We got the Ortiz thing. He looks like Mike Trout right there because Trout holds that bat up. He looks a little bit like Trout standing in there, but the hand slap is an Ortiz move. And maybe he's fooling everybody and really not saying anything to it. He's lip syncing. Just kind of now that everybody's bought into it, it's almost like I have to mouth something. I couldn't help it. I actually ran into him in the elevator yesterday at the hotel, and I said, "Okay, man, tell me what you tell." Tell me what you tell the bat. Just between us. Just between us. The bat was in the elevator with us, too. Was it? Yes, it was. And um, he said, sorry, bro. Can't do it. I said, can I hold the bat? He said, no. Nope. I said, okay. I'm out. Good talk. Took it a little personal, too. Yeah, I can tell. You ever have any uh, conversations with your bat? I used Fine. to take my Fine. aluminum bat That's back to the hotel with me and put them, soak them up a little bit. Put him right next to the air conditioner to see if he can get hot by catching fever. <laughs> Ouch. Dead ball, dead ball right here. See, you try to get your bat. That's so weird. You, you actually try to you make try to your bat Ill. sick. Yeah. Yeah, get a fever. Get hot. Get hot. <laughs> I'm serious. My roommate and I, we, we do the same thing. Who, who, was your, who was your roommate? Pedro Grifol. Oh, oh yeah. Coach for the Kansas City Royals yeah. right now. Brew crew out here today. Good pitch. Probably got a little more of the plate than he wanted to, but Josh Young, excuse me, Young is retired. So the first time up late with a two strike count went fastball in to get Josh Young out. They did it just a minute ago. He fouled it off his foot. And I think they're trying to not waste one, but throw one off the plate away. This one cuts back, and Young just couldn't. Pull the trigger on it. Five strikeouts on the day for Casey Murphy, but that's now four in a row. Here's Grant Little, left fielder. He is one of the strikeout victims. That's that pitch. Third time in a row he's thrown him. That same pitch. Took it for a strike, then swung and missed over it for strike three and starts him off with it again. In there for a strike. So the message of please pound the strike zone seems to have been heard. The strike percentage is way up. 50 pitches here in the bottom of the fourth. Go well, back down and in with a slider. Oh yeah. Quiet Cook's movements are back by the plate. And he hasn't had exactly the offensive season they thought they would have, but I think he's a guy that ultimately catches in the big leagues at some point. Because he's a comfortable guy to throw to. There's, there's nothing herky jerky with the movements. Everything is really under control. Really knows how to handle pitching staff. Oh, no, it didn't. Murphy misses badly after getting ahead 0 and 2 with two pitches both spiked in the dirt. Now if you go with the fastball you got to elevate it try to hit that upper quadrant try to see if you can chase if you miss you miss up you don't miss down the middle. Down in that zone. Or you can go and repeat and throw that breaking pitch. For a strike. And now from 0 and 2 he has put himself right back into a 3 2 count. Three really what you would term non competitive pitches. They weren't ones that little would consider even swinging at. I go slider right here. He's done it in the past. Why not now. 
Try to get him to swing over. He has struck out four in a row. No strikeout here, center field. Good read, good yes. jump from yes. Dominic Fletcher out there. He's a really good center fielder. It's a big time arm. He can make up for a lot of things with that left arm, but the jumps and the routes are very consistent for Fletcher. No miscues, last 41 games. He also has a home run. And we will talk with Tim Tadlock. Laura Rutledge will talk with the head coach, of Texas Tech. Laura, of course, more than capable of coming up with a line of questioning for the coach. But if it were you, what would you ask him? Uh, I think the first thing now is offensive approaching is Casey Murphy. Because this is an offense that not too many shut down. And now through 13, almost 13 innings this year against oh. Arkansas, Texas Tech scored one run. Right. It doesn't happen to this offense very often. Zach Reams designated hitter 17 home runs on the season big time pop wind blowing straight out to center field. Two and oh. Angleton Texas a 348 average coming in he was a. Junior college all American back in 16 when he hit 481 that's 481. With 102 RBI and 17 homers. Mm. Catch it. It reminds me of Travis Hafner. Hmm. Back in the day, Cleveland Indians, big old neck right there, big swing. Here you go, get your pin collection. Very common. See kids running around with pins at the Little League World Series a couple of months from now. A little College World Series collection going. And a 2 1 offering to Reams. Look out. Dead oh, he almost caught it. Yeah, Hafner would do that. Kyle Schwarber would do something like that, too. That literally almost got caught between the arm and the rib cage. Elbow protector right there. Squeeze. Squeeze it. Squeeze it. Mm. I like when Berkey says he compressed that ball. He could have compressed that one right there. In the lat. In the tricep. That one kind of compressed a rib, I think. Kidding with that muscle? There's no ribs. That, no baseball can get through. That's a big dude. Here's another one. Cameron Warren. Ten homers on the season. Walked his first time up. See where they get some of their power for a team that blasted. 82 homers on the regular season. Arkansas with 95. Arkansas with a couple more to gain. They're, they're closing in on the 100 homer mark for the season. Oh. A little Eduardo Rodriguez going there on the mound for somebody whose stuff has been really good. Five strikeouts. Fall behind these big hitters, you run the risk of giving up something big. I'll try it. You guys did a good call on the weather, too. It's uh, a lot better than it was 10 minutes ago. You're welcome. You've been 100% accurate this whole week. Have. The ball is pulled foul. This is a Texas Tech team that's been here, as we mentioned, 14, 16, now and 18. A little different, though. Those two years they lost their first game, so they're playing you know, with a little house money by winning that first game. And you say that, and then as soon as you lose the first game, you realize I got no house money left. Uh, I'm out. I got to win now every game that I play. Three and three days if you happen to lose here. Yeah. 
And if that does happen, if you can win three in three days, it means you played four in four days. True. It's, it's a big one. You get tomorrow off, so you can reset the bullpen a little bit. And whoever you face on Friday is going to come back and beat you twice. And the big boys are apparently playing a little better. Florida and Oregon State. We'll see Oregon State tonight against North Carolina. Cooper Criswell will get the task of trying to slow down a team that just scored 14 runs. But if you had favorites coming in, it would have been Florida and Oregon State. This is going to be playable. Shortstop going out. Kerstad was really deep. He calls off the shortstop. Jax Biggers, that was a good, smart play. And Biggers is grateful as well. Tim Tadlock, Laura Rutledge, when we come back, we're through four at the College World Series. You're watching the College World Series presented by Capital One. Texas Tech head coach Tim Tadlock here with us. And coach, what adjustments need to happen offensively to get something going for you guys? Probably the biggest thing is just kind of get the line moving. We're, we're not going get to get it all back in one swing. We need to put together some good at-bats and give ourselves a chance. You said that all your pitchers are available today. What's your plan from a pitching standpoint? Well, we'll let Kazada go. He's he probably good for 40 pitches here. And then we'll pr probably see where the game is. You got Harper No and some of those guys down there. All right, thanks, Coach. He left. Oh, awesome. Did you see that? I did. <laughs> Tadlock wants to keep talking with Laura. Yeah, carrying a conversation. Trying to help. I like it. We're back in the fifth inning. Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Carl Ravich, and Laura Rutledge, you just heard. We're at TD Ameritrade Park, Omaha, Nebraska. Double elimination format of the College World Series. Eight of the best teams in the country survive. They get here. We've said so long to a couple of them. Washington and Texas have gone home later tonight. North Carolina or Oregon State. One of them will exit. Well, guys, just want to let you know that Tim Tadlock was actually talking to our camera guy, Shane. He said, why'd he leave? He left in the middle of the interview. I think he wanted a little more camera time there. <laughs> well, we can just figure this out. We can Third lock time here. He knows the way it works. <laughs> lock the camera down on Tim. If yeah. he's got to do some stuff that's entertaining, we'll tell him he's got a camera on him. Two our strikes. director, Scott Johnson, has like a thousand cameras here, so we can we can dedicate one to him. We can find you, Shane. There he is. A few different angles. Oh, did he go? Barry Chambers quick to make sure that Jeff Hendricks was awake. What percentage of time you think the first or third base umpire actually does see that? I think a high percentage. They're, they're looking for it. I would say over 75%. Yeah, so you're thinking 25% of the time they ask them and they're going to say yes or no without truly seeing. Right. Usually they'll say no swing. <laughs> if they see it, eh. Take the safe route. Cole was a hockey player growing up. His dad was a hockey fan in Philadelphia. The Flyers, he slaps another one in a center field. He can go the other way. He's got two hits. But his first sport was hockey. His dad... Watched him one day in the backyard as a switch hitter. Said, you want to try that switch hitting thing with that left side, nine years old? Said, sure. When I'm a nine-year-old, went into his little league and said, every at bat I'm going to use and hit from the left side. The first one looked awkward. It was, of course, a base hit. And that's worked out pretty well. It really has. That breaking pitch right there stays with it. That was a check swing. Took it, realized where the angle was, and then this time just drilled it over the shortstop. Pretty relentless offense here for Arkansas. Seven hits. Texas Tech has one. Martin looking for his second hit. He had a double. Both he and Cole scored in the first inning. They got two in the first, one in the second, and a home run from Jared Gates. Two more in the fourth. Dominic Fletcher went deep. High cheese at 95 from Quezada. 0-2. Like this. Blaine Knight, the game one starter. Casey Murphy is throwing tonight, sitting next to each other and see that a ton. First game starting pitcher, and obviously they face somebody different, but could be talking about approach. Yes, he yes, did. Yes, he did. That is a strike and a strike out. Now, 
Quezada picks up his first seventh of the game for Arkansas hitters. And here's Heston Kerstad who struck out twice. Now he's got a new arm to look at. That last name starts with a K, and you assume perhaps international, but he's just a Texas kid. A freshman at 6'3, 203 pounds. The Mariners picked him in the 17th draft, the 36th round. We're not going to do that. We're going to go back. Good pitch. Fastball right at the knees at 95. Kezada showing some good stuff. Kezada has really good stuff. And like Tim Tadlock said to Laura just a minute ago, I mean, he's he can steal you nine outs, potentially 12 outs in this game for Tech. Mm. Certain guys swing and you just think like this is going to be a hit. Kerstad would fall into that category. Might give a young Sean Casey Casey type swing. The stance a little bit. Just the bat head stays in the zone a long time. Third time today. He's in a one two count. Slow roller to second base. They'll have one play over there to first for the second out. Down to second goes Cole. First pitch. head got jammed. That's a good pitch. Real good pitch. Fastball on the inside part of the plate. Talk to Dave Van Horn. Next inning. Gotta be pretty comfortable right now. You go 2 0 in this thing. Exactly where he wants his hogs to be. They've done that just once since he's been there. Popcorn hat. How's that working out? A little butter going into the old scalp. Be fine. Slips right in. Slap that in the pillow tonight. Mom will be like, what is going on here? Yeah, I just put the popcorn bucket on my head today. Hit. It fit well. Protected the top of my dome from the sun. Designated hitter Luke Bonfield. That's the hat you get when you hit a home run too for the Razorbacks. And they don't just place it on you. They'll slap it on you. Oh yeah. Ball, it's out and down. First game, Martin, Kerstad, and Fletcher went 7 for 14 with six RBI and three runs today. Much more spread around as far as the offensive production goes. We go to Fletcher and Gates. They're the two guys that have gone deep today. Bottom of the order has helped out considerably. Here you go. Guys, runner at second, two outs. Gabe Holt, fastest guy. Look how close he is to that warning track out there in right field. That's way back there. It's, I mean, no doubles means more singles, and if there's a single to right right now, it's yep. it's six nothing Arkansas. Quezada, if you watched him after he throws it, he gives you a little animated move on the mound. He, he kind of is calling his his pitch. Off. Nice. Yeah, he knew those two <laughs> fastballs were out of the zone, and he reacted right when it came out of his hand. Got to challenge Bonfield here with some cheese. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think he would too. Fletcher, who went yard, is on deck. Ninety six. He's lived right there. I mean, he's been ninety five ninety six since the first pitch. I think you look back on the SEC season in Arkansas. There have been a couple of teams that have gotten here. Mississippi State really stumbled out of the gate. 
Florida had a down period sort of toward the end of the year. But Arkansas was always picked as one of these teams that had a real good chance to advance to Omaha. And they never really, really took a big dip. Pretty consistent all year. At the knees. Paul strike three. Luke Bonfield bends over. Can't believe it. Take a look at the strikeout. And we will talk with Dave Van Horn, whose team is up by a score of five to nothing. Laura Rutledge when we return at the College World Series. This is the College World Series presented by Capital One. Arkansas head coach Dave Van Horn here. And coach, around about a month ago, you told Jerry Gates he's going to be in the lineup no matter what. How has that affected his offense? Well, I think he's relaxed and he just he's hot. I mean, obviously, he's got four or five hits already in the first two games. And he hit in the regional, the super regional. He actually hit in the tournament as well. And he's raised his batting average probably 80, 90 points. Casey Murphy gave up that leadoff hit and then ever since has really settled down. What allowed for that? Well, he's spotting it up a little bit. You know, he's gotten behind some hitters, but he's done a nice job of not leaving it in the zone when he's climbing back into the count. And, you know, that's a tough lineup over there. He's done a super job. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Think about some of the players that have come through these programs. And since we're talking Arkansas, Dallas Keuchel had a terrific outing in his last game on a staff in which Verlander and for a while Charlie Morton and of course Garrett Cole talk about like Cy Young guys. He's now on a staff that's kind of got four of them, or at least candidates. Andrew Benatendi is. Settled into that left field position for the Red Sox. Arkansas's baseball lineage continues to be one that's growing. It's the best hitting team that Dave Van Horn has ever had at Arkansas, but it's Texas Tech with only one hit. With Michael Davis, Cody Farhat, and Braxton Fulford. 7 8 9. Let's see if. Murphy pitches to them that way. Tries to get a quick inning here in the bottom of the fifth. Cook calls for the fastball. Nope. Broke one off. He can't find it. Now he does throw to first. Safe. Good job by Michael Davis. Cook had a hard time finding it. And he beats it out. And again, no review of plays at first or second or third base here at the College World Series. Good point on that with Davis, too, because he didn't wait at all. This ball down in the zone, swings through it, and then sees out of the corner of his eye that that ball potentially is going to get away from Grant Cook. If he waits an extra tick, he's out. Just as good as a leadoff single right now. Tech has a leadoff man on here in the fifth. So it's a strikeout sixth wild pitch runner at first for far out the center fielder. I don't think there was a cross up there but Cook no. did seem to put a I thought I saw him put a one down. You did. You did. That's their slider. Yeah they're saying yeah. But it went down to his knees to go block it. Well, I guess no I, cross up whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know for sure what the signs are, but I do. I, I do know he put a one down. There. Oh. 2 and 0. I think it's a good opportunity too to talk a little bit about the SEC conference, which has been the dominant conference. But here again, we're starting to see, and we saw Florida win, Arkansas playing very well. They made up what almost three quarters of the field. And there's a real good chance you're going to see an SEC team in the final again, if not two. Yeah, I mean, Mississippi State already 2 and 0. Arkansas already in the driver's seat here. Mississippi State finished ninth in the league. It was 12 and 15 in the league going into the final weekend. Swept Florida to go to 15 and 15. Arkansas was great. 
the entire season. There's your national champ. Six for the Tigers, two for South Carolina, back to back years. Last year, Rosenblatt, first year here. Gators and Georgia in there. It's Matt Cronin, who was earlier sitting next to Blaine Knight. I misspoke and said that it was Casey Murphy. Left hander with a power fastball. And they, they that's the one thing about this Arkansas bullpen. They can throw three or four different guys at you and not have to lengthen anybody out. Still have everybody ready to go later on this week. Especially if you can hang on and win this game. You'd be in such a more comfortable position. That guy can bring it right there. Oh, it's a, it's that high spin rate yeah. boring fastball that stays up at the top of the zone. Into the mid 90s for Cronin. All SEC final last year with the Gators and the Tigers. Thank you. 2 0 meeting for Cody Farhat. Now 3 0. Wes Johnson looks out there to pitcher. You get a 5 0 lead. You've thrown 68 pitches. And we're falling behind 3 0. Those are things we, we can't really be doing if we want to be a championship team. It's not, and not only that, Carl, you, you end up blocking now the 8 hole hitter. You got Braxton Fulford coming up to the plate. Who is bunting? Who is? You think I down do. five zero? I do. Yep. And, and Texas Tech doesn't do that very much. Fulford's in there for his arm, and we've already seen that arm. It's a real arm. Offensively, he has not been a great offensive player. Tech has ten sack bunts all year. This guy has three of them. I I, I understand the score. I'd be surprised if he's not bunting here. Remember, Michael Davis struck out, then reached when Grant Cook couldn't pick it up. Fulford is not squaring yet, which we've seen so many guys who are sacrificing do. And he looks at a strike one with no indication that was going to happen. Barrett Lowski is warming. We've seen him once already here at the College World Series for Arkansas. They sent a couple of guys out there. Lowski's the guy who's throwing. And Fulford is struggling, one hit and 30 at bats. The exception of Blaine Knight, Arkansas. Basically has every pitcher available today. And now you're behind. Hey. Oh and two. Took two straight fastballs right down the middle to go to you, you got to spin something right here. I think. Oh it's in. I'm surprised he didn't swing at that. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually really surprised he didn't swing at that. I, I was I was thinking right along with Wes Johnson right there because you. Mentally you think if a guy takes two in a row now he's going to get a little bit jumpy and try to protect a little bit more. That's exactly where Casey Murphy wanted to throw that slider but Fulford with a good job of holding off. Playable in left field for Kerstad. One man down. The College World Series Finals begin Monday at 7 on ESPN. Getting closer. We get five teams left at the end of the day. Four will remain at the end of tomorrow. Could have our finals set by Friday, Saturday at the latest. Pretty good game tomorrow. All of our matchups the rest of the way are going to be really good. I mean, it's it's six of the top teams in the country the entire season that are left. Hey. There's a sort of a thinking out there. The way Oregon State came out of that rain delay and hit that they're not going to stop until they get to the College World Series final. You, you don't hear that with Florida. Why don't you hear that with Florida? But you hear it with Oregon State. I don't know. You should, should hear right? it with Florida. 
yeah, I think you know the only questions about Florida is they scuffled a little bit for two weeks at the end of the season. But through regionals and Eddie, you saw him in supers play a really good armored club. There's plenty of firepower there. Guys, what they do is they pitch well. They pitch well. They've been here before. They know how to win. And there's some thump now too, and with the way that this ballpark is playing, I mean, Florida's is it 99 home runs on the season right now. They're it's a different offense than it was last year. Jonathan India hit one out of sight, almost had two. I thought the ball he hit the center field last night was going to carry out. It didn't. I think he did too. Yeah, there, it, he, he got that one. Ahead 0-2 to Gabe Holt. Got him to chase. I got it. Yeah. I thought this hit the dirt. Oh, it definitely hit the dirt. Well, I'm wondering if he made contact though. I don't think he, he fouled it. it. I, I guess that was my point. I thought because he fouled he off. Never, he he never the gave dirt. the foul right. tip sign. Although he actually suggested the catcher made it look like I caught that ball in the air. And then the replay almost indicated he, he may have. I don't think the umpire, Barry Chambers, said there was a foul tip. Second time that Holt has struck out. Seventh strikeout for Casey Murphy. Only one hit for this Red Raider offense. That's a good pitch. See that little move right there that Cook made? And I, it's just, I, I just, when you see catchers do this, it's just a, a small shift with his body to go all the way out. And ultimately, when he catches it, he caught it in the middle of his body. It looks so much better for a home plate umpire, just from a perception standpoint, when a catcher's catching the ball in the middle of his body. And it's it's a subtle move. Everything kind of moves as the pitch starts to go that way. And he steals some strikes because that one to me looked like it was off the plate. Ball. One of the things major league clubs work on with pitchers too is get it and throw it. You know, and I think that's probably something that Murphy and his pitching coach at the next level will probably dive a little deeper into. Just he's pace. Yeah, he certainly has stuff. Yeah, well, I think his pace has slowed down with the runners on base, though. So. No runners on base has been a lot quicker. 1-1 one, one decline. That ball's hit hard to right field. Over there is Cole. Won't get it. It's over his head. Red Raiders are going to get two on a double by Brian Klein. And a new ball game here in the bottom of the fifth. Well, Klein turns on this fastball inside part, misses location. You see, he wanted it away. Murphy leaves it arm side, and Klein, beautiful extension, clearing those hips. Keeping this baseball fair. No chance right there with two outs. Two runs we're going to score. It's big now, too, because one, obviously, Tech gets on the board. But the second thing is, is I thought you would have Josh Young facing Casey Murphy here for the third time. And Young gets to see a guy three times. He's usually going to put a pretty good swing or two on him. Dave Van Horn out. We'll see if he makes a move right here, and he already has. Yeah. Barrett Lowski is going to come on and pitch. For Arkansas, Murphy's going to leave, having just given up that double in the two runs. He struck out seven in the game. 80 pitches. Bullpen door opens, and we'll see what one of the best hitters in college baseball, Josh Young, does as he gets set to come to the plate. One of the great events of the summer, the College World Series. Many of the colleges have their students home and doing summer jobs. Some have graduated. And these guys are still grinding it on a baseball field, trying to bring a College World Series title back to their college or university. Casey Murphy done after four and two thirds. Just a couple of earned runs. Thanks to that double we just saw from Brian Klein. He struck out seven. And now both bullpens are active. Barrett Lowski. He's on for the Razorbacks. 
This worked out well for him for two thirds. He struck out 10. That was back in that April 24th game. So he's hoping to find that magic again. It's a little tough spot here. He gets Josh Young. Who is due by young standards a guy that hits almost 400. He struck out his last time up flew out to right. His Play. first time up. It's a pretty good matchup right here. First pitch fastball at 93 fouled into the seats. See him talking to his bat again. We made reference to that. A lot of people aware that Josh Young talks to his bat. Mm, chasing some high cheese. Good job by Lowski to move it up and down. That's where he'll live with that one a little bit more too. He'll he'll live up and just out of the zone. It's again that fastball that just stays on playing. Try to bury a slider down and away, or take the fastball and throw it in the exact same spot they just did to Young. Now up on two. Second base in between hops. Young is retired. Lowski come in, comes in and gets the job done. Fiver in the books. The Razorbacks leading Texas Tech 5-2 at the College World Series. Fletcher lost that. Gates has also gone deep. They get seven hits. They get a comfortable five to two lead. And with more than one of the home run hitters, we send it down to Laura. Yeah, guys, Dominic Fletcher earlier today was saying he was glad he had had a game under his belt here because it was taking him a while to get used to the batter's eye in this stadium. He said from the plate, it almost looked too toned and took him a little bit of time to get used to it, but looked like he got used to it. There are some adjustments, though, Eddie, that you have to make in the stadium. Lays down a bunt, and he is going to beat it out. Homer and a bunt. Guys, that's sexy. Let me tell you guys why. You had a ball at almost 400 feet to right field for a home run, and then you lay one down. You're just playing with that defense. You want to play deep? I'll bunt it on you. I'll get on. They just scored two runs. It's a three-run lead that Arkansas has. Let's get some more base runners and try to add on. And now to Laura's point, I don't think she was referring to hitting the ball over the fence and then bunting, but the adjustments you got to make at this ballpark or what? If you were coming here to hit, Eddie. You're coming here to hit. Let's not forget one thing. They don't hit, hit batting practice before the game here. And then all of a sudden you got to come in, play this game. It takes a couple at bats to get used to it. He's comfy now. Yep, home run single. Pretty good first at bat two for him. So he's reached base three times. Here is Carson Shaddy. He walked his last time up and scored. No advancement on that ball that was blocked by Fulford. Fletcher's bunt means that the Arkansas leadoff hitter has reached five of the six innings. Three of those guys have scored. That's hilarious. I'm trying to go home, trying to go home. Sounds like me trying to get out of the sofa. <laughs> So Shaddy, I mentioned that his dad played with Dave Van Horn back in 1982. And Shaddy wasn't really one of those kids that was heavily recruited coming out of high school. And Van Horn was out looking around and he saw.
Carson's dad. And they kind of got to talking and, and look he said I don't have any money to offer him but if he wants to come here as a walk on we'll be all right with that. Sends this one to shallow right and that's going to force Fletcher to come back. So Shaddy who wanted the play there decided I'm all in and he since has played himself into a scholarship and. A terrific season and a potential major league baseball career. He's also taught himself to play not taught himself but he's learned to play the second base position because Carson Shaddy came in as a catcher and ultimately they. Wanted the bat in the lineup had to move him around a little bit has battled some injuries to get back to this point but as a senior has had his best offensive year 13 home runs has driven in 53 played a solid second base. Did a great career at Arkansas. Here's Gates. He hit a home run in the second inning. Well, that's and out. Quezada continues to throw who came on in relief. No batting gloves for Jared Gates. Oh, it's out. One thing Braxton Fulford behind home plate is is going to learn that you got to pick the times you're trying to steal a strike. And there's a few of those that are way off the plate that he's trying to frame up or bring back a little bit. And ultimately, I think you start losing a little bit of rapport with your home plate umpire. If it's close, try to steal one. But if it's one that you're never going to get, probably not one you want to try to present as much as the one that's close. Yep. The arm plays, that's for sure. We've already seen that. I think the arm on the mound is pretty impressive. It looks like if you want oh, to yeah. throw 95, you can throw it. <laughs> there you go, like that. Well, the one's close enough, obviously. You want to try to frame up, bring back, see if you can get it. That one clearly close enough, but I think it was just off the plate. Because that reminds, uh, reminds me a little bit of A.J. Ramos when he was back in Texas Tech. Ended up having Tommy John after his junior year. <laughs> Just had a shoulder procedure done yeah, also. Well, why does he remind you of him? What does he do? Just that velocity he had with a good slider also. Takes that deep breath looking down right there. All in. See that hop out off the mound. Yeah. Could see action with Fletcher at first base. Forgot it's a really good defensive center fielder and has has good speed. He has just one stolen base this year. Runner goes on the ground to second. Nearly hits the runner. They'll throw to second, and there's a double play. Klein to Davis to Warren. And great concentration from Klein as he had a deal with the running Dominic Fletcher. Took an extra second to get out of his glove, but the strong throw from the shortstop, and we go 4 6 3 double play. Arkansas is up five to two. Pretty good double play against a guy that's got some pretty good speed. What happened here, Eddie? Yeah, Kyle, you, you talked about only having one stolen base in four attempts, but see right there, that first move when he steals, when he tries to steal, he pops up, goes up instead of gliding through and then getting to optimum speed. You have to be able to move yourself in a low position and gradually come up. It, it's wasted motion right there. That first step is huge. And I think with that speed, he'll learn it as he continues his career here in Arkansas. No, that's a good point because the feet are plenty good enough to, to steal more than one bag over the course of the year. The other thing there, he had to break stride just enough to make sure he didn't get hurt. Right. If he doesn't have to break stride right there, probably beats that ball to second base. So Barrett Lowski, who came on last inning, continues to work. He'll get Grant Little, Zach Reams, Cameron Warren, and he's down in the strike zone ahead 0 and 2. Arkansas may be starting to sniff the fact that they could get to a game on Friday and be one away from a World Series final. And they've done it by getting out there big hitters young little Reams today 0 for 6 with two strikeouts.
Later this evening, Oregon State, North Carolina, elimination game. All right, cheese, he's gone 93 miles an hour. 24, the last 28 College World Series champions start 2 and 0. Mississippi State's already there. Mississippi State was down to their last out against Florida State. They weren't getting in any tournament, and here they are now, one win away from getting into the World Series finals. One of these two teams goes to 2 and 0. You got Florida at 1 and 1. Our game tonight, and the loser of this one will get Florida. That's a brutal matchup, no matter who it is. You sign up for a Florida, Arkansas, Florida, Texas Tech game yeah. anytime. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, you got some power left on this side of the bracket. It's going to be a fun game to watch. Two teams that were top eight national seed. Texas Tech was the ninth seed this year. First year of the committee seated one through 16. Yeah, did you like that workout? Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great. I do think the one thing we need to work on is is the four seeds and making sure that if you are one of those top eight national seeds, you should play one of the bottom eight four seeds. That that's where there should be a, a big advantage at the beginning of this tournament. Mm -hmm. Going to that one through 16, I, I I think it was a great move. Softball's done it for years, and it was something baseball needed to do. And I get totally that the way it plays out is why one side of the bracket here seems fairly heavy with ranked teams. That's just because the other side had their ranked teams lose. Would there be any consideration to once you qualify you reseed? I haven't heard any talk about it. Um, I, I'm, I know I'm very comfortable with this. Yeah I, I wouldn't say it's the right thing to do. But clearly one side of this bracket's a little stronger than the other one. And yeah, that has agree. nothing to do with the way it was set up. It's just how it played out. I mean, Mississippi State knocks out Florida State, who was a top eight seed. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you change it. I, I don't think you. I do like that. it the way it is. Yeah, I, I think we've made a good step in just going through the 16. Stanford got knocked out also, right? Yep. Wow. Twist that knife a little bit, Eddie. You've been waiting for that one, haven't you? Yeah, you have. You've been waiting. He, that's went, straight, a he went straight to the Mississippi State. Yeah, but that's right? a reflection that's of that. Yeah. You guys have a little uh, thing going. I love you, man. You know, here. Let's, Okay. You're good at weather. Yeah. Wow. What? <laughs> what? That, 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 that just happened. Reams is gone. Lowski <laughs> on fire. See what happens as soon as we uh what yeah, I mean, how would you soon describe as we romance that? The sun, comes, the sun out. comes out. What was that? Well then you know what? Where where have you guys been the last four days? Fighting. A little more. Let's get a little more bromance in the booth. Oh, good. Yeah. Mother Nature, likey likey us a lot. Now Warren. Okay. Oh. Nine strikeouts in a day for Arkansas pitching back to back here for Lowski. You said it earlier, Rav. They've. I mean, they've handled the heart of this Texas Tech order. Young with a strikeout, Little with two. Now Reams with his first. Hit hard right at the third baseman. Casey Martin is there. And they're not striking out. They're hitting it hard and they're hitting it at them. Arkansas is feeling great. We'll see Cook, Biggers, and the leadoff hitter when we come back. Here we go, guys. Play. He's out, he's out, he's out. Oh, did he go? Got it, got it, got it. He's got out, it. he's out. There's no dirt. I got it. Got it. Ball. His arm. Oh. <laughs> Travis Kassenmeyer, you got a pow in there. You better stretch before this one. You're going to make moves like that. <laughs> a pow. Love that. Barry Chambers behind the plate. Kassenmeyer out yeah. there. Chris Koski and Jeff Hendricks, your turn. How about Cook saying no dirt on the ball? Yeah. TD Ameritrade in all our glory right now. We got some bright sunshine and a beautiful day <laughs> for baseball. Razorback Nation, Hog Heaven right now, and Grant Cook. Ooh, mm. wow. 
Yeah. It had so much movement on it. Fulford couldn't catch it. I took it hard left. Yeah, it did. Like the sunshine coming out. The only one that doesn't like it. Is probably the left fielder Little. Grant Little now that sun is right. In his eyes. Third base. And that's young throws across the diamond. Cook retired. Laura. Well, Ravi, we're about to see Jax Biggers here. He already has an RBI single in this game. And during the rain delay, some of the Arkansas guys were like, man, what's going on with Mississippi State? They, they're on a real hot streak here. Even their number nine hitters hitting bombs. And Jax Biggers is like, well, hey, wait a second. I'm the nine hitter. Show me some respect to the nine hitters. And then they all agreed that he was going to go off today thanks to the disrespect he was shown by his teammates before the game. <laughs> yeah, when a nine hitter goes seven RBI grand slam, that's a that's a high bar. He hit this one to second. Maybe Biggers needs to get a banana or something along the lines of a banana like Westberg has done because that clearly the secret sauce. Yes. Uh, that's it. That's the whole thing. Yeah, but with that finger like that, can he peel it? I need to ask for help. Give it up for the Sports Center crew this morning. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, yeah. Randy Scott, Nicole Briscoe. They went all banana today coming out of that highlight flying bananas into the stands. So the highlight was terrific. I don't, did you see it? Now you were busy. You were busy this morning. Eddie had a commitment. But yeah, they, they had the Jordan Westberg highlight where the baseball would literally turn into a banana. So oh, when he hit oh. the ball over the wall, he had a banana over. the Oh, wall. that's outstanding. It was outstanding. Sports Center on fire lately. The Mississippi State bananas become a thing. Eric Cole to first. Foot race to the bag. Quick inning. Bullpen has been great. Quezada through six pitches. And we are heading to the bottom of the seventh. Stretch it out time. We're back in Zaxby's game track. Shows us Arkansas has got a 5 2 lead. Fletcher 3 for 3 today, a double, a bomb, 3 RBI. Lowski's been very good out of the pen. He's retired all four he's faced. For Texas Tech, fortunately, they've got a handful of strikeouts. Nine of them. Brian Klein, the only guy that has done any damage with that two run double. It was a shot over the right fielder, Eric Cole's head. Nine more outs they got to play with, Texas Tech. Try to get back here against Arkansas. We'll start with Davis, Farhat, and Braxton Fulford. And Barrett Lowski has been on fire on the mound. First pitch fastball right down the middle. Fouled off for a strike. The evolution of a bullpen. Sometimes it takes a while to figure out what roles the guys are going to be in. Then you got to deal with injuries. But if you can have a dependable bullpen, given that generally one or two starters will give you five or six innings, maybe seven, and after that, you really got to rely on your arms in the bullpen. Texas Tech has done a good job with their bullpen, and they've used theirs a lot. Saw Michael Byrne on the mound for Florida the other night. Reliability at the back end is huge. Hit. Call strike. It's become essential in this Arkansas bullpen. Some of the roles have shifted a little bit during the course of the season, but they have three or four guys at the back end that they really trust. Jake Rhino, Matt Cronin, Barrett Lowski, the three main. And you can get through this tournament with five or six arms. We've seen teams do that before. Lowski's getting through this lineup with a fastball right now that he's just throwing right by Texas Tech. Tenth strikeout. Well, this news is now out. ESPN has been told by sources that Major League Baseball will be coming to Omaha, Nebraska next year. All excited about a Major League Baseball game that will be telecast on ESPN Wednesday before the College World Series starts. It'll feature the Detroit Tigers and Kansas City Royals. Check out the game on Thursday night. Tigers and Kansas City Royals. This, of course, has been the home of the Royals minor league and triple A affiliate for a long, long time. So similar to Williamsport, where we have seen the last year and this season as well, major league teams come there. We're going to have the major leaguers here in Omaha, Nebraska, Thursday before the College World Series. And that is... Uh, 
big story for the folks here who love baseball as much as any other place in the country. And think about how many people are going to be able to see major leaguers in this town. Yeah. Not only the local fans, but all those kids that are in here playing in tournaments. It's a terrific idea, and we are delighted to be a part of it. Rob Manford, the Major League Baseball Commissioner and the General Managers of both the Royals, Dayton Moore, and Al Avila will be in town tomorrow for the announcement at 3 Eastern time is when the press conference is to be held. As an Omaha guy, are you excited about that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm beyond excited. I mean, I think it's tip of the cap to Major League Baseball and everybody that made it happen because honestly that's that's a really big deal for the city to get a and we saw what happened last year in Williamsburg. Oh, it was I mean, that the best. Was, that was that was quite a day if you're a fan of the game and it, it'll be the exact same thing next year. I think the other thing too for all the teams will be here. So you get all yeah. eight teams that'll yep. be here. Some of those guys will have been drafted assumedly by either the Tigers or the Royals. So you get a chance to watch guys on the in, in a big league stage in a place that you want to be in a few years. It's a giant deal for the city. And put it in perspective, Jackson Kowart, you're looking Brady Singer. Yeah. Both drafted in the first round by who? The Kansas City Royals. You got Cody Clemens drafted right. in the second round, by the third round by the Detroit Tigers. Notable guys that have been participating in this College World Series. Look at Barrett Lowski. Another strikeout. 11 Red Raider hitters have been struck out. Fourth strikeout for Lowski. No one has come close to him. You know, again, so we talked about Lowski earlier this year against Texas Tech. Four and two-thirds innings, he struck out ten. The approach today has been pretty straightforward. It's been that one. I mean, it's it's probably 75, 80 percent fastballs. That fastball at the upper part of the zone that Texas Tech hitters are continually swinging underneath. That's when you know that fastball has really good carry. He's <laughs> retired all 19 Red Raiders he's faced this year, 14 strikeouts. And I know it's been discussed the next the next move and I think it's certainly something that's at least being discussed and hopefully worked on is to bring the Major League Baseball draft to Omaha. Then you'd have the home run. You know whether the yep. game is just a one time deal or it becomes an annual thing. But if you bring Major League Baseball draft here. Amen. And you can have all of these people exposed to it especially the youth of baseball and clearly Rob Manford and Tony Petiti and company have had a lot of different agendas. One of them has certainly been near the top to reconnect with that generation of baseball fan and player and they've done an unbelievable job. It is incredible the connection that people make between Major League Baseball and Little League Baseball. And now they're going to be able to go to that next level which is the college kid. And you can start when you're a little boy little girl playing ball get up to the college and the majors and you've kind of got that linkage between 10 year old 18 year old yep. and 22 year old. Well and, and I think First of all, you think of the week you could have here. If you, if you start the draft on a Tuesday, you go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you have a big league game on that Thursday, and it runs right into this College World Series. And the reality is the impact of the college game at the major league level right now is massive. Of the drafted players Bigger on opening day rosters. Yeah. Drafted players on opening day rosters takes international free agents out of it. 70% of those players came through the college route, either four-year college or the junior college route. So clearly, from a business model standpoint, it's good for Major League Baseball as well. I think it'd be awesome. And again, news conference tomorrow. The commissioner, Tony Petiti, will be here in Omaha, Nebraska. And again, also, while a lot of the credit is going to be given to Major League Baseball, give the city some credit, too, for making it available, being willing to do it, opening up TD Ameritrade for it. I, I, can, I can guarantee you the city be open to the draft, too. You got a few places you could put that. And, and I mean, you would have two straight weeks. You have to walk far. You go right across the street to the CenturyLink Center. And it just it, it lengthens what is already an amazing two weeks surrounded around baseball here. You go draft big league game college world series. That's a big win. And, and Rav you're talking about trying to bring the, the the younger generation in. There's four or five hundred youth teams that yeah, are here. Exactly. Over the course of two right. weeks. You, you let those kids see a draft. You let those kids see a major league team from all around the country. All you're doing is creating more players. And you see where they mostly get drafted from. We see we saw the numbers on the bottom of the screen. Sixty one percent 2018. We're drafted out of four year. Colleges you're looking at. Showing these kids that it's important. Being that student athlete and yeah. also. Incorporating it in any which way possible to find yourself as a professional through this route. First five picks, I believe, in this year's Major League Draft all as well, college. all came yep. through college. Yep. Yeah. 
We'll have much more on that on ESPN, on SportsCenter, on .com, on the app tomorrow. Matt Cronin up with two outs. Big spot for Gabe Holt, the leadoff hitter. Well, we and heard it right there. Are you ready? So are you ready? He said, yep. yep. No need to speculate. Holt choking up again, 2-1 count. Good pitch at 92 on the inner third. I see that reaction. I go right back to the same place. Right back to the exact same place. It did not seem like Holt wanted it in there. No wrong with double or nothing wrong with doubling up with that fastball inside. Do it again. He was trying to there. It leaked a little bit over the plate, but you can bury it on the inside black. That's a tough one for Holt to get to right now. And you want to belt higher a little bit above. That this one I want elevated. I don't want it down to the bottom part of the zone. Play. Yeah. Strike three looked a little low, and I'm sure that's what Gabe Holt is thinking. Big strikeout slows down any chance of a rally. Oregon State and Carolina in the house. They're coming up next after this game on ESPN. Arkansas with the three run lead as we head into the top of the eighth inning and we've talked a lot about the impact on younger kids here in Omaha with these college players. This was a neat moment before the game. Brian Klein there. You see the young man Chase in the stands. Chase just said to Brian, hey, you want to play catch? Didn't know each other. Chase is in town with his mom. His mom went to Texas Tech and he said, yeah, I'll play catch with you for a little bit. They did this for a good five minutes, and finally Brian said, hey, one more, and then I got to go back out. The smile on Chase's face as he ran back to his mom through the stands was one of those things that just makes you want to soak it all in and enjoy this, guys. No doubt. Like it. No doubt. Good stuff there, Laura. Really good, and good for Brian Klein. Good for Chase. And that connection between youth player, college player, major league player, that's what we've been talking about. As Major League Baseball brings a major league game to Omaha next year, Royals and Tigers on the Thursday leading into the College World Series. Press conference tomorrow, but a very big story here in Omaha today. Kezada has been great. Three and a third innings of scoreless relief. He and Lowski have been terrific out of the bullpens. As Arkansas attempts to tack on a couple of security runs. Martin Kerstad Bonfield, 2 3 4. Oh. Velocity's helped too. Fastball 94. He's been 94 to 96 for the most part. Slider's good. Again, this is going to be a really good senior side. He's going to get out in somebody's system right away. And you can see a guy like, like Kazada that can bump through a system pretty quick. There's another real fastball John McMillan up and throwing. He's been as high as 98 this year. Why not? I mean we're talking about the Major League Baseball teams coming here and certainly we all know about the bullpen and their increased velocity. Why wouldn't we see guys throwing 95 98 down here. 2 2 nope. Cause I, <laughs> I love it. That's why that's why I see a Jay Ramos right there. See at 360 after he made that throw. A lot of energy on that mound. Challenged him with a fastball sitting there in the mid 90s. Somebody like Quezada wasn't throwing as hard last year. The idea that you're a senior sign. Was there development over the course of the uh, junior to senior season? Yeah, it could be a variety of things. It's. Um, Sometimes you, you bump up, get a little bit better that next yep. year, too. That's a good hit in between third and short. And Casey Martin battled Jose Quezada, and he won it. Casey Martin's second hit of the day. Seven pitch at bat right there for Casey Martin. Getting on base for three and four to come up. 
Nicely done. That's the hole he lives through right there, the 5 6. Pitch down in the zone, not trying to do so much. Looks like this is a pitching change about to come. Quezada has been great. He gives up the hit, had gone three and a third scoreless, and he'll be responsible for the runner on. Some Tadlock to Laura, huh? About 40 or so pitches. They get 44 out of them. Big Johnny Mack, Johnny McMillan coming into the game in Omaha. Back with Arkansas, up by three. Wow. Wow. You saw it come by, Mike? Yeah. Wow. The sparrows fly around like there's no tomorrow. I'm, Bugs. I'm waiting for one of them to get hit like that one Randy Johnson yeah. pitch. We don't need another Randy Johnson deal. No, we don't. But there are birds here. You, you became famous for your bird predictions, didn't you, Eddie? Yeah. Remember the time? You had, you had an exact time when they were going to show up. 7.46, so I'm not mistaken. Well, they're a little early today, then. Yeah, they're out early, but it's been raining. It's been cloudy. It's been <laughs> unseasonable. John McMillan on, and a lot of the work for McMillan this year has been in a starting role. So he can absolutely come in and finish this thing. 15 appearances of those 15, 12 are starts at this point for McMillan. It's a real fastball. Can get into the upper 90s, especially when you bring him out of the bullpen. Only challenge this year has been the control. 47 walks and 60 and two thirds for McMillan against 71 strikeouts. Got a little ice cream going. Which hat should we pick for today? That's dangerous now. You start spilling the ice cream in there, you're, you're buying hats maybe you didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> Meet of the order after Martin single Kerstad Bonfield. Just his average come down a little bit today. He has struck out struck out and then into a fielder's choice. Pops this one up giving chase young left fielder coming hard fair ball. It drops where nobody is third base wasn't covered but McMillan. Who gives up a fluke. Single ran over to cover third. Couldn't place it any better. Oh, you gotta love those right there. He's still standing at watch, he's still standing at the plate. Now he decides that I better get going because this ball stays fair. Heston had no idea. Thinking, wait a second. He was he he was yelling for it to get in the stands. Oh yeah. When it came off his bat, you see him? I think I think. I think on that one he was thinking it was going to carry into the stands. The winds totally shifted on him over the course of two days, though. And the wind is now actually blowing yeah. hard out to center bring field. Bring it back towards fair territory. Eighth inning here at the College World Series has been a been a big inning for runs scored. And it feels like we may be in a situation where that could continue today for Arkansas. As Bonfield's up with two on, he's squaring. Runners are moving all over the place, and we throw it behind Casey Martin. Luke Bonfield does bun. He's doing something he hadn't done all year. Just 21 sack bunts for Arkansas over the course of the season. Luke Bonfield does not have any. I don't like this. I'm with you. I don't either. And not only that, he has to bunt it towards third base, put the pressure on him. This is a harder bunt uh, to, to make. And it's I'm a power you. hitter. You know what? Just let him swing the bat right here. Right there, you saw that the fundamentals were not sharp at all. Bat head was pointing down. The knees weren't bent. Now, this is a conversation that you're going to have here, Coach Van Horn and Bonfield. He's probably going to tell him, listen, show butt. If they charge yeah, I mean, the same take, way, he's going to take, take, him, out take him out of He's going to take him out of the game right here. He just saw something he did not like. And it did not look comfortable at all. That didn't look comfortable at all. So I'll tell like you this. I, I don't disagree with much that Dave Van Horn does. I think he's one of the best game managers in our game. I, I, this one's risky. It's a 5 2 ball game right now. And I know he's making a change right here because he's trying to put somebody in that can bunt. And clearly, Bonfield didn't look comfortable doing it. I mean, no, the bat hit goes all the way that. down. He doesn't go down. You got to go down and try to get it with your lower half. But 
you're taking your four hole hitter the DH out of the ball game right now in a tight game. I mean there's a chance Bonfield's going to hit again and if you give up a few it really matters. I this one surprises me. Hunter Wilson comes in as a pinch hitter and there's a strike already. Talk about talk about putting the pressure now on on Hunter Wilson. They're going to charge like that. You know what? Swing the bat Hunter Wilson. Bonfield had struck out three times today. Hunting is definitely one of those aspects of the game which for the most part has not has not been kept up very well. Tell you kind what, defensively, defensively I put the wheel play on right now. See, this is just a lot of pressure on Wilson. I think he's going to tell him the butt right here also one two. Don't you almost have to since you just took your four hitter out. Wilson's a 289 hitter. He too only one sacrifice hit. And if you're thinking, well, Luke Bombfield, he struck out already three times in this game. So what? That's fortunately that's part of his game. He can walks. also hit a gap. He can also hit a gap, a gapper for you. He's also hit a ball in the seats already in this tournament. Two strikes squared to bunt. Pulls it back. Two and two. Arkansas has had great success closing these games out with their bullpen. They are 39 and one when leading after seven. But you get the sense Dave Van Horn wants a little more than just a three run cushion. Nope, that's it. So we waste Bonfield. We give up and out. Runners got to go back to first and second. Make things even worse. That, that's Bonfield strikeout, isn't it? No. That's Wilson strikeout. Left with an 0 1 count? Left with an 0 1 count. 0 2 count, it would have been Bonfield strikeout. That's why I asked it as a question. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it? Like leading into it? I got you. Two thirds. I think we should just more. give it two third Wilson. Actually, I, I'd actually give it to Coach Van Horn. <laughs> yeah, I, just, <laughs> one. I didn't I didn't like that one to start. I, and and the other thing is there's a chance that you're gonna need Bonfield and you're facing a guy that you're probably gonna see 85-90% fastballs in this spot. Breaking hey. ball, Dominic Fletcher in there for a strike. All right, we'll circle that one, Kyle. Top of the eighth. Pinch hitting Wilson for Bonfield. They haven't been able to get Fletcher out. Triple away from the cycle. Well, if you're a Razorback fan, you're thinking, well, didn't execute. At least they don't take the bat away from that guy at the plate right now, which is Dominic Fletcher. She said they haven't gotten him out. They would have. Sacrificed successfully, most likely he would have been walked, which isn't a bad thing, knowing how Carson Shea Shaddy has has been this postseason. The great Jeff King once had four hits in a game against Stanford back in 1985. So Fletcher looking for his fourth hit to match a school high. He has one triple this season. Oh. Somewhere John Shambi's like, really? You're gonna leave that up on the screen? Needing a triple for the cycle? Cycle? I was thinking the exact same <laughs> thing. Uh oh. He gets his fourth hit to match King around third and flying home. And beating the throw home is Martin. And that's the tack on run that they needed. 6-2 Arkansas. Dominic Fletcher, four for four today. Wonderful afternoon for Fletcher. 
four for four, but we've been saying it since the first pitch of the game. Look at Holt in right field right here, and look how far he is. No matter what, you're going to send the runner from second. He is almost to the wall. By the time he gets this baseball, there's no chance to get Casey Martin out at home play. Four Good for four, four RBI for Dominic Fletcher. Huge game. And now Carson Shaddy. Still only one out. <laughs> what was that? Oh my. A lot of run in on that 95 mile per hour pitch. Watch this. That's to right. Hope playing deep won't get to that one either. Another run's going to score. It's Kerstad coming in. And it's seven to two in favor of the Razorbacks. And you just talked about it. Shaddy's had a great offensive season facing a guy in McMillan. You got to dial up for that fastball outer half down in the zone, drives it to right. We've talked about the defensive position that gave hold. Play a little bit more shallow before. May have a chance to throw Casey Martin out in the home plate. Instead, Martin scores. That time, if he's playing a little bit more shallow, he may have a chance to catch that ball. I don't think it was going to get by him in the gap. Back to back singles, now four hits in the inning for Arkansas, and they've tacked on two more runs. Big runs now lead it by five. One down for Jared Gates, who's gone yard already today. Thought about it there. Somewhere in Arkansas, they're doing that shaddy shuffle. We've had 19 runs scored in the eighth inning of games here at the College World Series. Oh. And as big and strong and as powerful with as much velocity as the arms have had, the eighth inning have been the unraveling of many a team. Gates Homer came in the second. It was a solo shot. Oh. Won't chase, and he's said two and one. Heard Dave Van Horn tell Laura how hot Gates is, and it's not just in the NCAA tournament. He's hot in the SEC tournament. Texas has nightmares about him. He got three hits against them. Oh, he rips another one. Right field back goes Holt at the wall jumps. Oh what a play by Gabe Holt. Tagging from second and going into third and sliding he safely is Fletcher but what a catch by Gabe Holt. Took away an extra base hit and saved at least one run. Well the athleticism is there. We've been yeah. talking about both all of us about how deep he's been playing. Maybe they were waiting for this moment right here but you look at the odds. Saves a couple runs with that play. Now that's fair. I mean, it, it may have cost him a little bit earlier. It, it, it absolutely benefited him yeah. right there because if Holt's playing normal depth in right field, that ball's absolutely over his head. First and third for Grant Cook. Chatty has decent speed too at first base. Maybe they get something going with Cook, the eight hole hitter up. Oh.
Well, Arkansas has had the Red Raiders number so far this season. They beat them back in April fairly handily and they're doing it again today. It's only a five run game. It has actually felt a little more one sided than the five runs. Look out to the backstop runner coming in. He may be out. He's out. Called he's out, out he's at out. home. That ball bounced right off the backstop, and now you got to hope that Fletcher, who landed awkwardly at home, is going to be okay. He's kind of looking up at the umpire, thinking, you know, McMillan might have been in my way as I try to touch home. Eddie, any chance you get an obstruction on the pitcher here? We probably get it. I, it, I don't know if I've ever it, seen right that, here. and you honestly had an argument for it right there. Oh, yeah. No we call. Really did. Yeah. That's the inning, 7 2. Wow. We're back. The NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Laura Rutledge doing a great job down on the field. Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Carl Ravitch up here in the booth. Arkansas 7, Texas Tech 2. Only three hits for the Red Raiders. And as I mentioned, it has felt one sided partly because of the hitting dominance. And the guy on the mound has been incredibly effective against this team all year. And this ball has popped up, maybe playable. Diggers and Martin giving chase. Left fielder there, too. And it's Kerstad who makes the play. One pitch, one out. Back to that dominance. Barrett Lowski has faced 22 Texas Tech batters. And he has struck out 15 of them. And he's retired 19 of them. And this guy has played really well defensively in left field. Kerstad took away double, double or extra base, excuse me, earlier in this ball game. Then this time has to range a long way from where he started. Takes that ball just in foul territory. One pitch, one out for Lowski here in the eighth. Again for Arkansas, if you can just leap forward as Josh Young steps in and fouls off a fastball. You get a couple of days, you go to Friday, you get a win there, you're in the finals on Monday. Your arms are going to be in great shape. I'll tell you the other thing, if you're the 2-0 team, you can roll the dice a little bit more on Friday if you sure. want. Sure. They could come back and start Isaiah Campbell. They should have a bullpen that's really well rested. So even if Campbell doesn't give you a bunch, you can go piece it together. And you know you have Blaine Knight waiting the next night if you need it. Right. If you're right, then you got him starting game one of the finals. And Knight was good. He certainly was far from Knight great the other night, but he picked up another win. He improves to 13 and 0 on the season. Play. And they're a little quiet right now in that Arkansas bullpen. 0-2 hit a hard on the ground and passed a dive of Vigors. That's some of the strength that Young has. He pounded that ball for his first hit of the night. All right, Thursday, ESPN, the 72nd NBA draft starts at 7 Eastern, but our coverage will begin early in the morning on both SportsCenter and, of course, Get Up. The Suns go one, the Kings go two, the Hawks go three, and we'll see if those teams stick with their picks or others trade up for them. Thursday, 7 Eastern, ESPN, the ESPN app. Young came into the game with 99 hits. He now has 100 hits even on the season. Grant Little try to wait on that. And he fouled it back. See how Cook made sure that he became a kitchen table over that baseball so it wouldn't get by him, through him, around him. Cronin had started to throw earlier, was down. 
Now with Young on first base, 2 1 count, Cronin up and throwing again. I think one more base runner. It's probably Cronin's game. Backed up on that one. Ed's going to tell us he should have charged it, but he did get the force at second. Go yeah, ahead. He, hesi he hesitated on that one. That's all it took a little bit of hesitation, and he knows it too. Right there, he panics, goes back, realizes he's only go going to get one. I think you'll take that there, won't you? Oh, you'll take it, but the, the correct play, and he knows it. As soon just as he saw that going. bounce, just keep going. You would have probably had a chance to get Little also at first base by charging. You're in no man's land if you get caught in between. Yeah, the double play is going to mean a very slow walk for Dave Van Horn. <laughs> it's, it's a it's slow like, walk. <laughs> like a painful walk. Little tiny steps on the way out there yep. just to give Cronin as much time as possible. Well, he's ready. Barrett Lowski deserves a loud ovation. Yep. And he's getting it from his teammates on the mound. He was outstanding and has been against Texas Tech this season. Lowski out Arkansas in control but a big hitter Zach Reams with 17 home runs coming up. Shut it down. Come on. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet. TD Ameritrade in the 2018 College World Series. Arkansas leading Texas Tech 7 2 in the bottom of the eighth, two outs. And we have made a pitching change. Barrett Lowski out. Very, very good in three innings, two hits, five Ks. He's responsible for the man on first. That's Carson Shaddy. And here comes some hard throwing left. Matt Cronin, 6'2, 197, a sophomore out of Florida. Check out the strikeout and walk numbers. It's a pretty good combo, huh? 52 punch has 12 walks for Cronin over 42 and a third. Left hander will get into the mid 90s with a curveball and a changeup. You're going to see a lot of fastballs from Cronin at the top part of the zone. Lefty Eddie that throws this hard, that good control. You think there's a future for him? I believe so. Especially when you can throw inside. It's got a lot of character to him. Saw him earlier in the year in Fayetteville. Looked really good after some time off. Starting him young. Probably already knows a little woo pig suey. Texas Tech's got him started early as well and a reminder our next game will start around an hour and five minutes after this one is complete. This one started after a three and a half hour rain delay so you're getting home from work on the East Coast get a chance to watch some good college baseball tonight 635 there 535 here in Omaha and the winds have shifted so if you love watching offense and balls fly over the wall now's your time to tune into the College World Series next couple of days expected to be that way in fact temperatures a little different around 70 degrees. We're used to hundreds here and 90s. So a little change as Zach Reams in his 17 homers comes in to face Cronin. First pitch 95 strike one. Two strikes and down to second base uncontested goes little. If you're Cronin and the Razorbacks, you want to do it again, Eddie? Buenos dias. Yeah. Buenas tardes. Y buenas noches. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. We take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. Just laying out to hear that ball hit the bat. Dominic Fletcher, his home run, and then the Razorback hat into the dugout. 
Arkansas has been pretty dominant today, leading 7-2, looking to get a victory, move on to the game on Friday, and then they'll be one win away from a College World Series final. Four pretty good words when you're a college baseball player to say College World Series final. Kurt Wilson on the freshman out of Arlington at 6'2", 185. We'll try to make sure Arkansas doesn't score any more runs. He gets 8, 9, and 1. Grant Cook, Jax Biggers, and then back to the top for Eric Cole. What Was it like this? 94, we just saw 95. Was it like this when you were at Florida State? Was it like that when you were at Stanford? Or was it the same no. as Major League Baseball where you had one or two guys that could do this? No, velocities Velocity. have gone up yeah. Oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. And the specialty, especially from the bullpen, the... Even at the major league level, it was let's get to the bullpen as fast as we can to see less velocity, less action, and two pitch pitchers. So where did the velocity, like where did we find it? Well, I think guys are tough play, second baseman, first baseman. That made him made that look pretty easy, Cameron Warren. But where do you find it? I, I think guys are training different. I mean, I think as you grow up, I mean, you look at, at the Alan Jagger stuff and the bands and kids that. 12, 13, 14 years old, just just training your arm more based on velocity, more long toss, and really more emphasis on that velocity. I mean, when I was coming up, and, and the ability to sink the ball is still a good thing, but, like, that's what you wanted. I mean, you right. wanted a guy that could go sink or slider and, and fill up the strike zone. Hmm. That philosophy, and you guys see it all the time at the major league level, that philosophy of, hey, let's get the guy that can sink it no is, more. is spinning pretty quick. Launch angle has changed and, all and, that. And not only that, because it's changed the launch angle, because of where the positioning in the infield. Emphasis right. is more now on stopping that base hit and forget about the double play. Let's just get the out. But you can teach velocity. I mean, that's just something you can you learn. Can train I, I, you velocity. can train velocity. Train, I'm train you velocity at a younger age. Absolutely. We see it. Young kids now with those bands. Well, when you say bands for people, that, what does that mean? Well, they got the they got the the, the T bands, the Thera Jagger bands. bands. The yeah. Jagger, uh, Alan Jagger's a big. Uh, I mean, Trevor Bauer guy. Yeah. So Alan Jagger's a guy that that and has worked with plenty of others. But Trevor Bauer's probably the. Jagger's a big long toss guy. The uh, the bands that you'll see hooked on defenses really all around the country. Um, and again, it's. I mean, you will you will go and see this stuff. When kids are 12, yeah. 13, 14 years old. Right, and then of course the are. counter to that is well, that's why we're seeing more surgeries for kids. 12, Which I 13. think is in I think there's two things. Yes, velocity is one. Overuse is a massive part of that. Mm -hmm. though. And it's still important to put a baseball down for three or four months out of the year. There you go. See, stretches your muscles out. Yeah, stretches. I mean, can develops them a little bit. Both. Line drive, shortstop, right there, Michael Davis, and there are two down. So given all the advantages that these kids have and the advancements, do you wish that you had this when you were younger or did you, I mean, obviously it worked with what you were doing, where you ended up, you just got hurt. Yeah, yeah, I wish I didn't have three holes in my shoulder. I get I mean, that. That'd be a lot better, but um, sure. I mean, everybody, forever, people have always wanted to throw hard. I just think that over the last 20 years, we've got a better understanding of how you train to throw harder. How well, hard, where do you think it goes? What do you think the I velocity know, ceiling is? I don't I think know. We've seen a max right now. I really do. You do? Yeah. I don't think it's going to go higher than what we've seen in St. Louis right now. They got, well, they got a yeah. young man that's throwing 102 miles per hour. He's, yeah, he's gone up to like 100, 400, yeah. 5, yeah. hasn't he? So you don't. I, I mean, but here's the here's my counter argument to that is is when you look back historically in anything athletically, it always advances. I mean, it, it always does. so. I think it's somewhat unrealistic to think that it just stops at a number, but I mean, it's a number that sounds fake. You roll a guy out of the bullpen through 104. Right. What do you mean? You, you, and then it comes down to the safety, and you see a lot of the right. hitters now that are protected because they end up not only having that, that double ear flap, they end up having the elbow guards, the face guard, the ah, shin guard, guards, the elbow guards, guards, suit of armor. Especially What's, if you're a right handed thrower, you have to have all those guards on. There's no way. It's, it's it's almost it's so difficult to get out of the way. Right. Out of all those pitches. You see a lot more, not only collegiate uh, players, but also major leaguers that have never been hit in the face say, this right here at least provides me a little bit more security.
Eric Cole, a couple of hits, looking at a 3 2 count. It's been the dominant conference in just about everything. Football for sure, and now we're seeing again the continued development of all the SEC programs. Wilson kicks the dirt. He lost Cole. We talked a lot about Stanford not getting here, but think about the programs. I do it every time you look out to see those eight, the ones that aren't here. Vanderbilt was really close this year again. Tim Corbin made the point. I just got to get we got to get out of the SEC and then see where we're at. It's almost it's almost a measure by which you know only the teams in the conference have to deal with and then you get out of it and you're like well this is this is different. Well then you couldn't escape it. Mississippi State comes in for the super. <laughs> so you think you're out of it but then you're not because State comes into Nashville. And what was as good as super regionals right. as ever, I've ever covered. Super regionals this year were outstanding so competitive. Six of the eight right went to a game three. There yep. were walk offs and last inning and top of the ninth. Every night it seemed like there was just a magical play or a fantastic finish. That's why I like where we're at in the game right now. When, the, when they took the seams down to the baseball and the home run absolutely came back. And really when the ballpark here plays like this, it it's, feels like baseball. Yes, yeah, really absolutely. Does. I mean, the power is back. The strikeouts are back. Great defense has always been there. Bunts are way down. It's a more exciting product. Texas Tech's got 10 sack bunts all year. Like, that's good. I like that. That is a good I, thing. I, I like that. Yeah, we had last year, what was it, TCU? They had, had like two, five. Two yeah. last year. The year before, they had five. It's, and it was one of the more dynamic offenses in the country. Tech has one of the more dynamic offenses in the country. Look, Florida doesn't do it a lot, and even mm -hmm. Kevin O'Sullivan the other night acknowledged we don't do it a lot, but we were in a situation we thought we had to. Strike out of Casey Martin. Last chance coming up for the Red Raiders. Warren Davis and Farhat as we continue from the College World Series in Omaha. It has certainly been one of the most incredible stories. They lose their head coach. Andy Canicero resigns early, early in the season, like really before the season gets started. And they've been doing it with Coach Henderson the entire season. He hasn't been yet had that interim tag removed and there's some thought that may never be removed and he may not end up being the head man at Mississippi State but boy what a story it would winning. be if they keep winning they and they win the whole winning. thing. I mean they'd be two national seeds along the way. That offense that offense looked really good against really North good. Carolina. I mean and they scored in so many different ways. Jordan Westberg has a grand slam drives in seven they score eight runs in the eighth as a nine hitter. Arkansas 39 and 0 when leading after eight. Their staff has limited this great Texas Tech offense to three runs and eight hits over two games. Three runs and eight hits over two games. That's hard to do. Yes. Yeah, there's not too many in the country that can say that against this offense. Twice. That's a hard, hard deal. Warren Davis and Farhart. We got, of course, North Carolina, Oregon State coming up roughly one hour and five minutes after this. Pours went in for a strike, two and one. Reminder of the NBA draft tomorrow, 7 Eastern Time. NBA draft preview show will follow us here. Does he not remind you of Cliff Lee? Cronin? From yeah, from Arkansas. Yeah, another Arkansas guy. Yeah. Over the top, the where, where the release point is. Got a lot of swings and misses. Fuck. Up in the zone. Left field and it is tailing foul and that's where it will go. Pretty close though. Pretty close. It's a pretty good eye there, Carl. That was pretty close. Pretty and close. Yeah, you look at the wind. I think it was bringing it back. Cronin's got 12 saves on the season, an ERA of 298. 
loski has been used a little bit as a closer. Reindel's got five. Loski four saves. Sears with three, two. Ball inside two. ball four. And he lost the leadoff hitter. So here's Davis, who twice has struck out. 13 total strikeouts of Texas Tech hitters today. In there for strike Hit. one. You look ahead, you got a Texas Tech team that's nine in the country. They have just now dealt with the five overall seed, and in order to advance, you're going to have to be the number one overall seed. Florida, again. again. Tim Tadlock, Texas Tech, have two wins here at the College World Series. In their three appearances, both wins have come over Florida. That ball's fair. Fair ball it is, and it will catch a piece of the padding out there, but Texas Tech not going quietly. Second and third after a double from Michael Davis. Did him a favor keeping that curveball up. Watch this pitch just stay up. Wanted it down and away. Give a lot of credit to Michael Davis, just going with it. Now you get runners at second and third, no outs, and still a lot of life to this Texas Tech team. All you have to do is get the top of the order up. Give yourself a chance. Give Josh Young an at-bat this inning. And he, the one that is the one he may look back on is this walk to Cameron Warren. First pitch to Cody Farhat. Fastball gets a piece of the corner at 94 miles an hour. Cronin's success comes in the upper third of the strike zone. Absolutely. He's keeping and just that out ball of it. down. Yeah, I mean it's it's instead that of high spin rate. Light, right. Hold plane fastball that he'll he'll run at the top part of the zone and up and out of the zone, try to get guys to go after it. And most of the swings and misses that you'll see will be underneath the baseball. A lot like the closer from the Washington Nationals, Sean exactly. Doolittle. It's Cheers. the same idea. Yes, it's the exact same idea. Cronin working hard here, 1-1. One, one. That one's in there, and an awkward-looking swing from Cody Farhat. Even there, in that location, the swing was still underneath the fastball. Yeah. And, and so the idea is that ball just holds plane a little bit longer. It doesn't have the normal, natural sink that hitters are used to seeing for their entire life. Stays on plane. It's hard to train it. See the center fielder Fletcher right there. He's actually playing a little bit poolside, but mostly straight up. I'd have him with that last swing. Go to right center field. At least five or six steps. That's a fair ball. That's going to get into the corner. That's going to score two. Farhat with two strikes. He delivers, and we got ourselves a ball game. Nobody out, 7 4. Hey, now that's pretty good because that's the one that guys usually don't get to against Cronin, and Farhat out of the eight hole did. The pitch was up and away. You get that pitch a little bit up, up and middle in. It's a different story, but going the other way, nicely done right there. No chance at first base to make that play. Gates tried his best. Slow walk out for Wes Johnson. He will talk with his closer. Braxton Fulford will not be the guy that Cronin faces. Instead, it'll be Cody. Masters, I believe, is a pinch hitter. See where this ball hit. Watch where this ball hits first. I mean, that is taking it out of the glove. That hits a foot foul. And it comes all the way back, and it's clearly fair when it goes down that right field line. If you looked at the location of that pitch, that was absolutely ball two. It's also exactly where he wanted to throw it. Right. 
I mean, I mean that's I, you got no. If if you're Cronin, like you train for that pitch. Yeah. We want to elevate that fastball because guys guys usually can't do that. Rindle now up. Hasn't picked up a baseball yet. You get one more guy on base. I think that'll change. So Cody Masters gets in here for Texas Tech as a pinch hitter. 262 hitter on the season. Five doubles, a triple, and no home runs. It was unreal where that ball actually bounced off the dirt the first bounce and then came back into fair territory. That's in there for strike Hit. two. You pull trigger big boy you know what's probably coming when you step in there. It's not easy coming off the bench for a freshman facing lefty throwing mid 90s but now in an 0 2 hole. Well, the other hits have come here with two strikes. Both have been down the line. See that pitch where it was, the location was up, but it was in. Closer it is to you with that height, really hard to get that bad head out. It's a good angle right here, mm -hmm. right at the hands. You come off the bench, you better be ready on that first yep. pitch. Like extra ready. Had a conversation with Hank Aaron last Tuesday during our telecast, and he said, Guys, I don't understand why guys are breaking bats over their knees and throwing the bats. It's not their fault. <laughs> Leadoff man is Gabe Holt. He has struck out his last three times up. I got to tell you, that's a pretty good day if you can just make that statement. I had a conversation with Hank Aaron the other day. Uh, Stop there. That's a pretty good day. <laughs> Boy spent about five innings with him. He was yeah. terrific and gracious. My cheeks hurt from smiling for those five innings. That's <laughs> cool. Corner of the head, 0 oh 1. Ninth inning, man on, trailing by three. That's a good pitch. Hey. Gabe Holt got called out on a strike just below the knees his last time up, but he was confused. And now he's dug himself an 0-2 hole here again. Trying to avoid his fourth strikeout of the game. Inside and he fouls it off. Gabe Holt wasn't going to do much with that. He's got two places to go here: breaking ball or fastball up. Agreed. Yeah, and that that if you're going to go up, I think it's a similar location to what they just did to the pinch hitter. Run that fastball up and in if you're going to throw it there. Back up the middle, hits off of Cronin. He's got plenty of time. He throws to first for the second out. And they get the speedy Holt. We'll take that, Bruce. They would gladly huge. take that. That is huge. You get on base right there, two outs. Got Brian Klein coming up. The guy you want to keep away from hitting this inning is going to be on deck. Here's the thing, too. I mean, Holt is the fastest guy on the field. So even if Biggers gets to that ball at, at shortstop, I don't think you're going to throw hold out. The mm -hmm. only chance that you have when this ball's hit up the middle is right there. If it hits Cronin, then he's got plenty of time to barehanded throw hold out at first base. And that's huge. That, that, that is huge because barring a double play, if he's standing on first, it brings Young to the plate. Chance to tie it with one swing. Here's Klein. Since Wes Johnson has gone out to talk to Cronin, seven states. Oh, it's up. Seven straight strikes prior to that and two outs. That's the first ball he has thrown since Johnson went out. And all fastballs. He hasn't messed around with that breaking pitch, and I don't believe he will this at bat. <laughs> 
93, and it's even at one and one. One one. Winner gets the day off. Loser to face Florida tomorrow night in an elimination game. That guy right there would be the tying run, Josh Young. Left field, playable. Kerstad under it. Arkansas, a winner 7-4 over Texas Tech. They get a night off. We'll see them Friday with a chance to go to the College World Series Finals. And it'll be Texas Tech and the Gators tomorrow night. Well played game. A lot of good action in this one. Great defense. Couple of home runs. Some power pitching. We should see you roughly 65 minutes from now with first pitch between North Carolina and Oregon State in the elimination game. Arkansas for the third time starts the College World Series 2 and 0. We'll see you at 8 Eastern time on ESPN. 8.05 first pitch. NBA draft preview show is coming up next. For Laura Rutledge, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, I'm Carl Ravitch. See you on ESPN 8 o'clock Eastern for more World Series action.